I'm Joshua Hanlon here at Brick World Chicago 2018, and we are about to start our whole convention floor tour here at Brick World. So this is going to be a long video, I'll warn you right now, because there's a ton of awesome builds here, but we want to show you as much as we can. And I'm joined by two different builders who are going to help me as we walk along and talk about the builds. So first off, John, if you want to give a short introduction for yourself. Sure, yeah, I'm John Kulpeek. I'm a Lego builder, just built all sorts of stuff out of Lego. Um, really enjoy just being here with the community and talking to everyone, seeing all these cool mocks. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And so for people who've watched past Beyond the Brick videos, you might recognize John from our Brick Fair Virginia tour. The he long talker, <laughs> the really long talker. <laughs> he, he was very nice to give lots of great in-depth information at Brick Fair Virginia. So we'll uh, looking forward to that. And then Matt here actually is the first time for uh, Beyond the Brick video. So if you want to give an introduction to yourself. Hi, I'm Matt, uh, Bricktail Studios on social media. I am an animator, actually, do stop motion animations on YouTube. Check me out. Yes, there we go. So the three of us will be walking around the whole show floor and talking about all the different builds we see. But we're starting right here in front of one of the most impressive builds, and this is a collab uh, Rick and Morty based. And uh, <laughs> since Matt, Matt is the in-house Rick and Morty expert here for of the three of us. So if you want to talk about kind of the characters and what we're seeing here. All right, so this is Rick. This is Morty, the short one, and uh, basically Rick and Morty is kind of a parody show on Back to the Future. So you have the crazy grandpa, who is the mad scientist. This is his garage lab right here. And then uh, there's his grandson, Morty, who is uh, kind of a panic-prone, uh, freak-out kind of dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great combination. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah, here we appear to have all of the uh, crazy stuff in his lab. Let's see, we have the... Um, where is the uh, device that he turn? Uh, Rick turns himself into a pickle. That's a notable one. Everyone's heard about that by now, I'm sure. And then all sorts of other fun devices around here and the stuff on the wall there. It looks like there's like a green safe thing. Oh, the detailing on the lock there, that looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you can even like walk inside here, like John's walking into the middle of like the workshop right now, and so you can take a look at all this stuff. And it looks like maybe like a wood frame here with yeah, base plates. Yeah, the two by fours to really, you know, make the garage scene look like a garage. <laughs> There you go. So yeah, this is, I, I forget how many, like five or six or more uh, builders collabed on this, but really impressive display and a, a great place to start the tour here. So we'll walk this way now and uh, start now at the corner of, of the convention hall and then kind of make our way around. And, you know, like we always say on these videos, we try to show as much as possible. Uh, we, we obviously can't spend five minutes on every build, but we like to, to show as much as we can while we check out the convention here. So... This looks like we've got a castle to begin with, then we'll hit some mosaics down here. This is called King David's Castle, and one thing I noticed with this right off is it's much smoother than a lot of castle builds that you normally see, which is kind of a different take instead of that more rundown look. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of the masonry bricks typically used for castle nowadays, as well as uh, snot, you know, for just bricks, mm -hmm. the appearance of that. And I think it heralds back to kind of the original castle theme too because you've got the really smooth uh, kind of like the uh, arches there and then it also have some newer techniques such as the the latticed windows there by the king and queen in the center really nice detailing mm -hmm. and as we move down here I'll clarify uh, snot the the acronym there so Le Lego community is a lot of acronyms so that stands for studs not on top so that's like sideways building and stuff uh, which is always impressive and cool techniques so now we've reached the military sections uh, I love these here like the armored column there is very neat uh, like a French town or something it looks like some German tanks and armored vehicles rolling through already the history buff in Joshua is coming here because he enjoys all the and these are phenomenal builds too. these are by Dennis wonderful builds very mm -hmm. cool detailing yeah. And something I noticed there, this is a good thing to point out, if, if you're noticing on the mock cards, which you might notice as John shows them there, some of these only have the person's first name, and that means they're, I believe, under 18, I think it is? Yeah. So uh, if, if they're under 18, they don't put the last name, and that also tells you uh, how skilled of a builder these are because they're that young and still doing, you know, some great builds here as well. So that's always impressive. A drawing board. Uh, what is this we have? Oh, so so this is also a good point to mention that with Seasons is the, the theme of Brick World Chicago this year. So you'll see Seasons related things, I think, throughout the show. I'm sure we'll run across many different ones. Uh, this is some kind of like turntable yeah. type of operation here. It looks like Mark has actually motorized the smock here with, uh, with all sorts of uh, maybe like the uh, battery controls there. It looks like it has an IR sensor too. So I'm, I'm guessing that everything turns as, as Seasons do, which is very neat. There you go. And I think those are old. Is it Samsonite gears? I think those are called? Yeah, those look like old gears to me. Mm -hmm. I think Probably they're... like, you know, 70s, I think. Yeah, no, 1968. Yeah. 1968. Okay. That's incredible. So the, the me mechanics set 03. Wow. It's there incredible. you go. Yeah. 003, yeah. <laughs> 
Very, very old gears. You see some of those pop up in the GBC uh, modules every once in a while as well. Uh, so then you've got mosaics here. I think the vast majority of these are from E.J. Bocan, who is just like a mosaic uh, master with the, um, how much he pumps out everywhere. Some of these we've shown before. Uh, some are new. I particularly like the Iron Man and the Dark Knight down here. Uh, always, always cool to see what E.J. Uh, brings out to these shows. And if we keep moving down here, we got sort of like island town here. So you got the wizard tower, uh, an evil lair. The dome on that is just phenomenal. I'm guessing okay. maybe jointed bricks or hinge bricks to construct that. Really nice. Uh, Ninja castle here. So yeah, you've got some of the classic uh, kind of ninja look mixed with some Ninjago stuff and everything. Yeah, I'm seeing the, uh, the old panels there from I think 90 sets. Okay. Lego had uh, a ninja wave. Yeah, I was always a big fan of those original ninja sets there. I think there's some, some really cool uh, classic, the, the, the minifigs and everything. Ninjago has some cool stuff as well, but the classic stuff I think will always be my favorite. And then the first of what will probably be many, many Star Wars builds that we see here at the show. Uh, always some really cool uh, Star Wars builds and talented Star Wars builders here. Uh, so this one, uh, for those of you, Matt, you're probably a little more familiar with Star Wars than I am. Uh, w uh, this looks like maybe some kits mixed with some customized work here. Yep, we actually have a lot of different vehicles from a bunch of different eras here. We've got uh, Y-Wings from the Galactic Civil War. That's uh, original trilogy. Then Fright and Center here, we have um, uh, some kind of fighter from the Clone Wars. Can't remember the name. Uh, and then TIE Fighter over here. We've got First Order Stormtroopers down here on the bottom right. And Clone Troopers on the left. Uh, Palpatine's Imperial shuttle there, hanging out there, looking awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of different eras that, and I like builds like this that are that are kind of like you know it's always the what if sort of thing, and then you you build it in a mock and it just looks phenomenal, really cool. Yeah, whole lot going on, yeah, so yeah. so I love that. Good action. Uh, then you got a little nuclear winter there, it's kind of post-apocalyptic type build, uh, and then we'll just keep working our way around the the square here. So this is, I think, a giant Stranger Things build uh, by Finn, actually. And we featured some of his builds uh, on the channel, actually. His, you've seen the progress on his Stranger Things house that we've, uh, we've been posting those videos. So uh, this was built by him. And if you've seen the show Stranger Things, I think you'll instantly recognize uh, Eleven here, the character that he depicted. A very large mosaic. This is uh, very impressive in size. It incorporates a lot of different colors that I actually have never really seen before in a mosaic, like the navy. That's the, that's the one that just sticks out to me the most, the dark blue there. So it, it works very well with this. Mm -hmm. For sure. And then if we move on around here, uh, looks like we've got... Dominion, which is a card carrying case. So this is I normally when people make like games out of Lego, I haven't actually played the game. This game I've actually played and it's a lot of fun. So for once, I actually recognize something that someone made here. Uh, have you have either of you guys played this? I have not. Okay, I, I have not either. But but it looks very cool. I yeah. love how they uh, managed to accomplish the the bricking of the uh, the text. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like a card based game. So I think okay. this is like a case for for carrying around. There's a whole bunch of decks of cards that you use to play. So it is very fun. I recommend it. <laughs> Here's uh, like a cityscape, very, very neat, smooth looking roads. That's always cool. Yeah, this is a great uh, example of snot in use here for the roads. We see studs not on top. Those are uh, look like uh, one by eight bricks laid on their sides, going all the way from one end of the base plate to the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good for making American style roads. Legos are typically more European based. There you go, yeah. A lot of really neat building techniques here I'm noticing with, with a lot of side uh, side place pieces. So using headlight bricks to just kind of have the studs facing out toward you and then have kind of a smoother facade like on this. Uh, uh, well, actually, this is normally normal built, but but you have some examples of where the bricks are, are laid so that they are uh, facing out to create a smoother effect. Same with the spaceship building. Yeah, particularly with balconies on buildings, I feel the like you fins. see a lot of that creative stuff. The fins for the windows, that's ingenious. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. The classic space, like hotel or whatever that is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. And then here's some more uh, mosaics, but in a very different style. So sort of like 3D, uh, almost a sparing use of pieces here. A lot of the base plates aren't even covered, which, yeah, a very, very different style than what you normally see. I had someone explain a really cool um, uh, kind of... Uh, optical illusion to me tonight, uh, last night about this because when you see these in person, uh, you notice that they're, uh, they are multidimensional, mm -hmm. right, with, with the different bricks. But on camera, what you'll be seeing in this video, they actually appear to be as, as, uh, 
as the actual characters themselves. So the trick here when you're at the convention is to pull out your cell phone and turn on your camera and see it then and then remove that and you actually see how it really is. It's a, they're just really phenomenal work. I'm assuming a lot of it is just kind of a building and then taking a step back and looking at it and then building again and just back and forth, back and forth. Not your traditional mosaics, and they're really nice. Yeah, it, it's always it's always crazy to see like the the illusions that these mosaics create when you look at them versus through a camera or something like that. So then here it looks like we've got a lot of like small scenes all done by the same builder. Uh, you've got a smaller uh, Scarif Star Wars. So Scarif was kind of the big Star Wars build. A lot of people did over the last couple of years. I think uh, Crate, I think it is from the latest movie, is now kind of replacing that as the popular Star Wars build. Uh, so we're seeing, seeing less of Scarifs, but still some here and there. And then you got even uh, like Lost in the Woods there. Yeah, I love Snoke's throne room right there. Okay. Haven't seen that yet. All of the red is very, it's very different, kind of intense looking build. <laughs> you have, uh, Definitely. One of the Ninjago characters there getting a selfie. Actually, there is a spoiler from that movie in the mock, so if you haven't seen the movie, don't, don't watch this part. <laughs> but <laughs> If you haven't seen it by now, though, you know, what are you doing? I, I, think, I think we're past the point. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of movies myself. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> really? Sure I would have never thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you've spent some time researching between the last video and this one. <laughs> yeah, we'll go along with that. So here's a Batcave build. It's pretty typical to see one or two pretty cool Batcave builds at each show, uh, and they're always fun to see. This one depicted both the rooms above and the, the big cave below there. Lots of details. It looks like maybe they have some lighting in there that isn't on right now, so it's kind of dark. But I'm sure during like World of Lights and stuff, it'll be pretty awesome. There's always fun action going on in these builds. You can see everything from Batman working out, lifting up his Batmobile to uh, uh, one of the Batman mini kits there by the die. Yeah, there's a lot of fun little details you can include in these mocks. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know what we have right here. Hmm. It looks like... I see buttons. <laughs> I do see buttons, you that's true. I want to do. I want to you push these. them, <laughs> of course, because they're there, so you want to push them. Uh, it looks like there's some lighting in here, or so, I'm, I'm going to guess, and I'm not sure if we should push the buttons or not. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. Remember, remember what happened when I touched the mock that last <laughs> video? <laughs> in front of the builder, it just kind of, I'm not, I'm, no, I'm not touching anything in this video, no. Yeah, they, it might actually be light up. I think they may have this, uh, this thing that's kind of coming over the top to kind of cast shadows on the whole thing so it accentuates the lights. Okay. Yeah. We won't touch anything just in case we <laughs> something goes wrong now. <laughs> we learned our lesson. <laughs> yes. Uh, so here's some giant cityscapes as well and you'll see a few of these throughout the throughout the convention. Uh, you'll see big kind of skyscraper type buildings, brick center. Uh, you've got the Sheraton Grand Phoenix right there. Uh, so sometimes these are based on real buildings, sometimes they're just kind of out of the builder's imagination and just kind of creating a city that they they think looks cool. Some weapons here. A lot of like, uh, you can see a lot of the sideways building on a lot of these weapons when you look at all the studs facing out. It's a great technique to incorporate, definitely, yeah. A nice uh, lighting incorporated in this city here. And then I think I mentioned uh, Crate earlier, so this is the first yeah. of a, a number of builds that we'll see. Uh, you've got like, I think they call it like the battering ram weapon thing there or something like that. <laughs> It's a Clayface, uh -oh. Spider-Man battle. Batman's going to have to work hard to free all those minifigures. <laughs> That's right. And then I think Aquaman here as well. So Aquaman is, I feel like, a kind of lesser known superhero. You don't you see as much about him. So it's, it's cool to see uh, some builds based on him as well here. Yeah, I have to admit, I, I'm actually, I mean, this should be no surprise, but I'm not that familiar with Aquaman, actually. But I'm noticing each of these are kind of like mini vignettes on a display itself. I wonder, is that having to do with the storyline or is that just a really awesome way to display it? So this is kind of a parody thing it looks like we got going on because one of the things Aquaman's known for is kind of having probably the lamest superpowers of the DC heroes. So All the Aquaman f fans are upset right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, we see we got Aquaman versus the dunk tank. We got him versus the public pool. <laughs> I see what's going on there. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, something seems a little uh, <clears throat> fishy. Am I right? Sorry. Sorry. Please don't unsubscribe. I'm sorry. <laughs> He'll be here the whole video. <laughs> We'll start it over here now then. <laughs> so this is Star Trek 2, and I, I feel like we might have seen these builds, and I know we've seen very similar looking Star Trek builds in past videos, uh, so you, these might look familiar to you with the, the Star Trek 2 poster there and everything. Uh, but again, great incorporation of lighting in these builds too, uh, all throughout it with the blinking lights, different patterns and stuff. Uh, that's always neat to see. 
We'll move down this way and start here uh, with this build that actually uh, a rare a sighting again for something I actually recognize. So this is an old TV show called Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea that I grew up watching because my dad was a fan of it. And it's really, uh, I mean, I, I don't think it was anything like groundbreaking when it came out, but I always enjoyed watching it when I was younger. And it's basically this like super advanced submarine uh, during like the Cold War and it goes around fighting sea monsters and uh, you know, other bad guys on Earth. So the builder's kind of depicting it fighting this big, uh, like, octopus-type squid monster thing here. Believe it or not, this is also something that I'm familiar with, uh, <laughs> just a lot from those, like, uh, kind of older TV show specials. Mm -hmm. Really awesome. Ooh, what do we have here? And, uh, Infinity. This is the UNSC Infinity from Halo 4, also in Halo 5. It is basically the super ship that uh, the human empire known as the UNSC has built to uh, fight the remainder of the Covenant and uh, the new foes that are introduced in these games uh, called the Prometheans. Okay, yeah, so that's some great background on the ship there as well. Perfect stuff there. So what do you think of this, like, accuracy? Obviously, you're familiar with the game then. What do you think of the accuracy of this compared to the, the kind of in-game ship? They definitely have the shape right. Um, as far as details go, it's pretty smooth on the outside, aside from details that you probably couldn't get at the scale. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. thumbs up. Yeah, good stuff then. So, Echo Base Hoth. Uh, Hoth is a classic Star Wars build. You see it, see a lot of those around. Here's like a kind of monster, like trolls attacking like uh, humans in their island fortress. And then here, some more like superhero mosaics, I think. Got the Hulk and Wonder Woman. John, uh, this is done by John Styes, who uh, we've shown a lot of his builds and past tours and everything, and a uh, pretty prolific builder that gets around to a lot of shows and, and always brings some cool stuff. I like how it has the kind of almost uh, Wonder Woman uh, theme around the, the frame of it. Mm -hmm. Sort of reminds me of the, the Quin or her uh, invisible jet or the shield and the sword. So. Yeah, all those little details like that add to it. A variety of smaller Star Wars builds here. And then a... Brick Quest Dungeon Board Game. Ah, so this looks like a D&D &D module, maybe. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Looks like all sorts of monsters yeah. and fun details in there. You can see the characters maybe at the, the beginning there. Uh, all modded out and everything re ready, to, ready for the game. <laughs> and they've even got the, the handbook. And then some monsters here. Looks like a scary-looking Venus flytrap there. Wouldn't <laughs> want to get caught in that. That is the stuff of nightmares right there. <laughs> I like the use of the mixel eyes there on the, uh, the beholder. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Monsters, stuff like that is one of the most interesting, interesting things you can do with Lego just because there's so many possibilities and the crazy stuff you can do with it is just amazing. So some smaller characters there as we keep moving down. And then I think we've got some Bionicles here. All of these appear to be by Nathan. Uh, okay. I think of all these, my favorite has to be the Fire and Water Dragon. That is a very nice build. A lot of different colors and elements used to create that. Some cool effects. Oh, oh, Five Nights at Freddy's. A, a game that just <laughs> freaks me out and gives me the willies. Ooh. I've actually never played it, but the, the characters are terrifying and and represented beautifully here. They're they're well done, but I'm scared. I'm scared of the game. No. They do look kind of crazy there. Yeah. <laughs> I I'd, I'd, I'd continue to avoid that one. <laughs> Check out the actual Volkswagen bug. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See some funny takes on stuff like that uh, throughout the show. And a lot of those, one reason I like doing these tour videos like this is because little builds like that are so easy to miss because the show's so big. So it's fun to go around and try to catch all of that as much as we can. So some more Star Wars stuff there. Got Hawkeye. Uh, and then... This is the Rax Family Manor. Just the, the the blue color there is interesting for a, a house like that. You don't typically see that color used. It's definitely giving off some Victorian uh, style era uh, looks here from the carriage and also some of the architecture styling on the house. In addition to the streets themselves, the cobblestone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it looks like based on the, the artwork and the, the party animals, this would be Paul Hetherington's work, which uh, again, a builder we featured many times very talented, uh, displayed some crazy awesome stuff over the years. Uh, right now I think he's been in a series of like party animal builds where he has all these cool animals that he builds and, and then uh, puts them on display in neat situations. So uh, yeah, it's always fun to see what Paul brings to shows. I love the use of the one by two um, 
kind of tooth piece as the top of the cow's head. That is very, very ingenious use for the fur. Good job there. It's a neat build of the, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Like that. Little uh, World War II build. Nice little trench and stuff there. And then a uh, bug Star Wars scene. Yep, that looks like it's Geonosis. Love the color choice they use there for the sand. Yeah, it creates a very different terrain environment than, than you normally see. Mm -hmm. Yep, rare parts. Uh, and some more World War II stuff it looks like here. So some, uh, some of the like Russians fighting the Germans, Stalingrad, which is a commonly depicted battle. Then you've got here uh, Battle of Okinawa and then a massive layout for the Battle of Midway here. Uh, so you've got lots of like the Japanese aircraft carriers, uh, bigger Japanese ships and stuff. You've got American aircraft carriers and everything and tons of planes, which were obviously essential uh, during the Battle of Midway uh, for, for all the fighting that took place. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool to see what the builder has, has done here with all this. It's always neat to see builds suspended in the air. And it looks like Josh here just or uh, maybe Josh and Alan or Josh really went above and beyond with this. It's just a phenomenal build. Mm -hmm. Really awesome. And one thing you notice with this, and I'm, I think we'll see more of this, is kind of the, the way the builders decided to use like wood frames and kind of a frame in general to, to hang builds and stuff. It's interesting to see how the builder decides to lay out their work and how they decide is the best way to depict it. Uh, some people like to do you know, just Lego and, and don't use the other materials. Uh, some people like to build the structure and, and kind of use that to display their builds. Mm -hmm. A little live performance stage. Smells like teen spirit to me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Imperial prison. A <laughs> uh, big minifig here. <laughs> and some more Star Wars little castle. Got an another uh, more sand Star Wars type of build. It looks like another Geonosis build. Yep, looks like it. They chose tan and dark tan for their terrain. Okay. Nice little changing it up there. Sure. And... Please begin, begin at, at the, the other, other end. end. <laughs> Let's see. So this looks like, oh, uh, this is uh, so an, uh, Bob Carney, who, who another castle builder we featured many times. Uh, I think it starts like right here. So this is all his stuff. So he is probably claims the title of the most prolific Lego castle builder of all time. In, insane builds that he's done, uh, and just just crazy crazy stuff. Uh, so. He's got a, some smaller ones this time. Instead of going real big, he went smaller. And I think it's all Scottish castles, I believe. So these are all castles that you can find throughout Scotland. He's got photos of the real ones here. Uh, just awesome stuff. I got a chance to talk to him, uh, I think it was a year or two ago at Brickworld. And he explained to me his entire process for building these castles and the proper scaling and the research he does. It's just absolutely, um, you know, really, really takes a very scholarly approach, I think, to castle yeah. building. It's something that you don't often see. And it's very neat. Yeah, I, I, it's so fun to talk to him because of how knowledgeable he is and how, how seriously he takes the building and trying to capture the details correctly. A lot of these he'll travel to and, yes. and see them in person and everything. So, uh, you know, his stuff is always just a treat to look at here. And he's got interesting historical notes and everything, which I, I'm a big fan of. Kind of, uh, you know, combining the educational history side with Lego is always something that I think is really neat. I'll keep going down here. And you've got the Lincoln Memorial. Here is an interesting take on, I guess it's Cloud City inside there? Huh. Gas prospector airship, Cloud City. Huh. Interesting details in there. Um, looks like we've maybe got, yeah, maybe a mini city in there. So Cloud City, do you think? I guess. Yeah, I guess it's sort I guess there's kind of the photos they're going off of. So it's like that scene kind of capturing the whole with the city in there. And then seasons of sharknado there there's the shark in the winter that's pretty good snowman. yeah snowman's not gonna make it you know there's always losses with sharknado we'll keep coming around here then and see what we have up here so this is i think in the beginning so i think it might start at the end here i think i think john's at the wrong end right now so this is uh i think depicting like uh, Genesis and uh, the creation of the earth here and so you've got uh, formless and void and then it goes through each day of creation uh, until you end where where John was just showing there so this is by uh, I think uh, I guess it's a whole bunch of builders actually yeah, a number cool. of builders did this looks like a collaboration very very neat detailing mm -hmm. and it's an ingenious idea making a you know a vignette of each of them that's that's really right. cool it's that's a really great cool. great way to depict that yeah. 
and then you end with Cain and Abel here. Mm -hmm. Next to that, we've got, uh, let's see, it looks like a Star Wars ship. Yeah, the YT-2400 freighter. Okay. Um, even with a small model here, I am going to pick this up real quick. As you can see, kind of a, it looks almost pre-Millennium Falcon in some respects, um, especially with the uh, detailing underneath. So this was actually in the old Star Wars Legends canon. This was the ship of a smuggler known as Dash Rendar. Okay, gotcha. So it's, yeah, but li like you said, John, it also definitely like sort of Millennium felt with the flaps yeah. up and everything. You get that feeling with it. Here's a cool... So different model. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so a cool little like cabin scene here. Like it looks like they're like a helicopter breaking up the party a little bit <laughs> in this situation. <laughs> looks like Vietnam to me, actually. That's a Huey gunship. Okay. And then down below looks just kind of like Vietnamese, you know, shanty shacks. Mm-hmm. I think you're right, yeah. I like that. And they've even got like a real life like ammo box or something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so some smaller than submarines here. And some other kind of like wilderness scenes and things out here. Got like a, almost like a gold miner scene there. I like that. Yo, Those small prospect. details. There yeah. you go. <laughs> General store. I think that's from the old Western sets, the, the red sign there. I, th I, th I think you're right about that. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I like that. <laughs> oh, interesting. You said the uh, the barrels there on the, what Colin made here, uh, or maybe the kegs, uh, judging from the title there. Mm -hmm. um, interesting construction. <laughs> A little prohibition scene. <laughs> and then some smaller uh, looks like Civil War builds, and the Gold Rush. Then we'll move around. I think there's a couple of big mosaics on the other side. We'll show in this square before we keep making our way down. So this is done by, I think, Sharon Vance, who uh, has been an a amazing mosaic builder for a lot of years. And she always brings some, some great builds to the show. Uh, so this is uh, Lita or the Swan, I think it's called. Uh, which is a very different uh, take on your typical mosaic. It's not depicting like the normal, uh, you know, superheroes or stuff that you see on mosaics here. <laughs> but I like all the colors and everything. And then also her work here, which is uh, Wind Waker Link. So from the, the Zelda games, uh, you might recognize that if, you, if you've played those. So then we'll move back around this direction and keep, keep going down here. <clears throat> and we'll see what else we we can find. It looks like we even have some entertainment in the middle there. Oh, yeah. I always appreciate a good juggling show, you know. Micah, Micah is one of, honestly one of the best jugglers I know. He's very good at what he does. So, that. Uh, so this is, there's a lot to unpack right here. It looks like we've got basically like a big race happening. So this is, yeah, this is, uh, looks like all of Ted's mock here, okay. yeah. And so uh, Ted has always been really, I think, uh, really takes an interest in these kind of like mobile little racing spaceships. And it's always very interesting to see his kind of space stadium, the racetrack, all the really just crazy awesome, look at that plant life. They're incorporating bionicle, friends pieces, transparent, what else, what else is there? Stuff I've never seen before, mm -hmm. those stars I've never seen before. <laughs> So yeah, all like crazy colors and transparent stuff and everything just, just adds a lot of detail. And even the, the minifig designs in there, I feel like are a real highlight as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, let's see, kind of a, what is this, sort of a ski resort type of thing we have going on with minions as well, <laughs> okay. Like <laughs> Looks like this is a Toro Lug uh, collaboration. Okay. So each of their names have been engraved on this, on this interesting okay. mock, yeah. The, uh, the minions are always an interesting, uh, you know, character to throw into things. <laughs> yep, I love how they built them. Looks like they found a use for all of the uh, eye pieces that you find at the Lego store nowadays. Okay. <laughs> yep, and then we got a tunnel over here. You don't see too many mountains anymore for train tunnels. Mm -hmm. They're hard to set up, so glad to see it. <laughs> it, is a, it is some nice added kind of 3D detail. And, and some Star Wars stuff here, so... These are some interesting vehicles that you don't typically see a lot of. These are another uh, bunch of Ted's builds here with the okay. uh, the spaceships and the Onithwing starfighters. I'm really impressed by the uh, regular arch design that he has going on the back here for next to the engines. That I have not seen a lot of, and it looks really, really nice. Works well. Mm -hmm. Like that, the kind of cloud build there with the guy racing up above the clouds. Another one of Ted's speeders, yeah. And Sci-Fi City, I think he uses, what, like tank treads there for each level of the city, which is a really cool detail. Yeah, and actually we've got the builder right here with us, Micah. Um, okay. Micah, yeah, so you're just entertaining us with your juggling. If you want to tell us about this build real quick. Yeah, so 
I mean, the whole idea behind it did come from the tank treads there. I thought it could look like a kind of alien landscape. So I then built off that, tried to do a lot of little greebly buildings. It's pretty much it. <laughs> I think you captured the sci-fi city look well, so good job. Thank you. The pieces that interest me the most on that are the, the handcuffs and the half uh, ball domes there, the, the, half, the half spheres. Those are, those are difficult parts to use, but implemented well in this build. So good job. Another build of Micah's there with the sea serpent as well. So very good work. Next to that is a cool take. I like this this take on kind of the classic, you know, colors and look of some of the old Imperial sets. You've got the yellow and white, even like the rundown brick look there, which I think is neat. And then the two the two big, uh, you know, red and blue ships here. So it's definitely sort of a throwback to the old like pirate Imperial stuff, while at the same time being a crazy big build. <laughs> yeah, it definitely looks like something out of a Disney movie, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was watching Zachary put this together, and one of the things that amazed me was behind all these panels, there's a lot of brilliant engineering structuring. Oh, good, as you can see some of it here on the uh, on the flip side. So it just is, it's, I don't know how he did it. I really don't, because if I were building this, it would be very precarious and it wouldn't be stable, but he has clearly accomplished an engineering marvel. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And next to that, some cool planes. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a little bit of my stuff. Actually, the cathedral okay. is a little torn apart, but there's an ambulance ship, there's a boat, there's a Namog. It's fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's always fun, you know, diverse type of builds, so yeah. that's good, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we've got a few builds by Cecily here, so kind of a pod racer type scene. You've got uh, Worms Armageddon, that he calls that there. <laughs> if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's a free game on Xbox, Worms. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Super Mario Home here as well, uh, which I, I really like that with all the, the fun uh, Mario details in there. And then a clock. So, you know, very recognizable. Uses kind of the Nexo Knight shield piece, I think, for the white, the white numbers there. And then here's some builds that I recognize, I think, from uh, Brick familiar. Fair. These look a little familiar. <laughs> um, these are some Indiana Jones vignettes that I did and a while to set up. So. <laughs> Yes. But, but it's worth it because they look very cool. So have you added any since we since we last saw these? Yes, actually. Okay. So I want to address the comment section on our on our Brick Fair video <laughs> because... Oh, your soapbox, your own the, the thing is, a lot of people were wondering if I was going to build the Crystal Skull, which is on the top row there, and the answer to that is yes, I did. Uh, for some people, it's a movie we don't talk about, but I felt it necessary to build it. You have the complete quadrilogy, I guess is what you would call it. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it's there. there yeah, there's six new mocks there. There you yeah. go. And I think they're making another one, right? 2020. Okay. Yeah. So, so you have to you have to keep up with it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> And then another one of John's builds with the shipwreck here. So, you know, you talked about sideways building. You kind of did that with the island base. It was it, it didn't survive the car ride here that well, and it actually did become a shipwreck. So uh, <laughs> it's mostly back together, but yeah. It works. Looks like a bunch by Nick De La Mora here. So characters, Christmas stuff, all sorts of, all sorts of fun little builds, even in Micro Castle. The Star Wars Porg, always cool. Nick always has a lot of really fun builds just everywhere. You can see a lot of recognizable things from pop mm -hmm. culture and just really ingenious part usage, especially on the Black Panther here, I'm noticing. Interesting. And uh, on Ash there for the, uh, I guess, what's the detailing on the cheeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, all those, all those little details in there. And you even got Bob Ross. Uh, and then here's a cool part of Brickworld that's that's new this year. They've never had this before, and this is like a broadcasting studio. Uh, so you might uh, remember Graham, who always brings the Duplo stuff and does some kind of crazy Duplo build. So on the other side here, we'll see in a second, is uh, a carnival layout. And uh, we'll take a look at that. But uh, the background of the carnival works as the, the background of this studio layout as well. And you can see computer screens, and there's like webcams and mics, and it's all this awesome setup here. So uh, lots of fun ways to, to show what the Brickworld experience is like here with this awesome stage setup. So I always think new, innovative stuff like that is super cool. So it's uh, fun to have displays that you know you can interact with and just see all the technology behind it and things. And at, you know, I was right over there, so I got a chance to see to get all of this built. Incredible, yeah, long, mm -hmm. long process, but well worth it in the end. And then, as I mentioned, we come around to the the flip side here, and you've got uh, two carnival games. So there's uh, Tea Time Toss, which I think. I'll just demonstrate here real quick. So you've got different levels of the cups there, and you throw it in, and if you get, I actually got it in like a two one there. That's the best I've ever done at this game. When I tried earlier, I was pretty awful. You want to take a shot here, Matt? Let's go. 
Oh, so close. There we go. So that's that one. And then this one is, it doesn't look like they have the pieces out here right now, but we'll definitely have another more in-depth video on this. This, <laughs> there's the, the, the little house, uh, the, angry, the angry man in the house right here. <laughs> don't have any here. Get away from here. We don't want your cat. We won't disturb him right now. <laughs> no, oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, we'll come by later. Thank you. <laughs> So that's the, that's the man who lives in the Duplo house there. Uh, then along here we get to a bunch of Marcus uh, Roll Bueller's builds. Uh, he's a great builder. We've shown some of his stuff in the past. Uh, this blue caterpillar, uh, Alice in Wonderland stuff, and then the, the stagecoach here. Uh, so many tiny details he puts in there. Looks like we got Han Solo's DL4, uh, DL44 blaster over there. That's his signature weapon from the old, uh, original trilogy. Okay. Interesting. You said the steering wheel part at the end of the barrel there. That's you know that's one thing about Marcus's builds. I always love seeing is you know you look at a model and it's obviously fantastic, and then you look closer and you say, oh wait, he used that piece, and and it's often pieces that are unconventional, unorthodox. You don't often see in builds. So he's, he has a very neat uh, talent for for seeing stuff like that in a build. We got the pop up book here. Yeah. So I think this is uh, a Grant Davis build. So you might let's see if this is move this here. So I think, uh, I don't know if this is the current iteration that got voted uh, to become an idea set or one of his older versions. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah. So if, if you heard the news about the pop-up book that uh, Jason Alleman and Grant Davis worked on, uh, this sure, is... Can be demonstrated too. Um, so basically, yeah, it works exactly like you would think a pop-up book works and you can even uh, snap the book yeah. shut here with this. And then as you open it, Voila, you have a build. So I think this yeah, is the one they great. submitted to Ideas then. So yes, you'll see yeah. something similar to this coming out soon, which is so awesome. You know, shout, Jason and Green are both incredible builders, and yeah. seeing their work like that become a set is just, just really, really cool. And uh, speaking of the complexity of a build, <laughs> and speaking of the techniques of a build, um, the inside of Pokeball by Grant is just, uh, it's... I, I don't know how he had the patience for it because if you look in the middle, I mean, you see this incredible detailing with the jumper plates, but then you look at the back and it's like a mathematical equation that only a professor <laughs> at Harvard could solve. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, you've got really cool detailing there. It's, it's yeah. crazy stuff in there and, you know, making the sphere shape and everything is just, just so great. So we'll definitely catch Grant for a more in-depth yeah. video on that build. Uh, and then you've got a big sword here, which is always cool. Uh, it looks like everything is brick built, even the handle. So yeah, the handle with the use of the uh, inside out tires, that's, mm -hmm. that's a neat idea. And it works perfectly. Number of smaller mosaics with some, some famous characters here. <laughs> and then you've got a, a spaceship, uh, several builds here by Simon Liu. Uh, a big spaceship. Uh, and then some some great like uh, these are micro figs or uh, is that what that nano figs something like that I think is what they normally call those the tiny little fig that figs there. This so is the, um, yeah, I think I'll, they are the Apollo um, astronauts maybe I think. Oh, these might, the he did he used, say yeah. there was something he needed custom printed so that might be them I can't actually tell from here but this mock has been uh, I think it was at Brick Fair this past year and I love seeing it in person always a pleasure to see Simon's builds here. And then here's an Alec Dode Simon Liu collab here, which I love this. Oh, yeah. I think my favorite detail of this build, it's the baby mech battle. So babies are in all of these. But the baby cameramen, I think, Isn't is my awesome? favorite. That is, that's just like next level right there with the baby cameramen. Are, are they bazookas to make it interesting? Oh, maybe. You right. can, that skill you can't tell. It's a <laughs> and then down here, Adam Myers has a big, very impressive ship, spaceship there. And another build by Simon, uh, Rexzilla. So it's, uh, you know, the T-Rex from Toy Story inside of Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, Rex, uh, Rex versus Buzz there. I don't know, who will win? Decide in the comments. <laughs> That's right. And then we'll start over here with uh, the Brick Lab guys. So this is uh, some of the stuff you've seen in, in other videos we've featured. I think some of these are parts of collabs and things that they did. Um, so you've got all sorts of cool stuff. You've got a, a, a John seems very impressed by this whale in the book here. I don't, I, oh, okay, interesting. I'm not sure what this is, but it looks awesome. What is it? Don't, don't panic. Again. Don't panic is the title of the book. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> so then you've got the meatball battleship where there's uh, the meatball guns all the way around the edge. Uh, the trees here, I think, were from their big, uh, their big collab that they had at the show last year as well. Darth Vader, but using, let's see, the 
I guess different sides of the same the yeah. same brick. Yeah, the grooved one okay. by twos. That's ingenious. It, it almost gives kind of like a matte finish to it, so it's it really looks like it's something like you would see maybe on a UCS uh, mm -hmm. plaque or something. Right. That's yeah, awesome. if you look at it from a certain angle, you can't even see it all. It's just all black. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah, and just using, I think, the same piece, just flipping the side around for, for what details they wanted to, to kind of focus on. Then a Grinch pop-up book. Uh, and then you've got Mrs. Mrs. Incredible here as well. So that's obviously the new Incredibles movie. I think this weekend of the show might have just come out, actually. So while we're filming this, uh, something like that. I still have not seen the original. But. Oh, oh, John, you haven't seen the original Incredibles? Okay, man. <laughs> There are some things that can be excused, but that you need to get taken care of. Understand. <laughs> Just watch it before you see the second one. Okay. <laughs> And then here is one of the most unique builds at the show, which is just uh, something kind of crazy. And this is, you know, you see like steampunk airships at a lot of shows and you see that type of build. But this builder actually made an actual airship. So he, he took like the blimp type balloon and attached it to the top of his airship there. And it's actually floating right now. He's got it tied down so it doesn't float away over the, the convention hall. Uh, but this is just very, very crazy idea here. It is indeed at times like these that I wish I were a Lego minifigure to be able to board this thing and just and just see and just go on an adventure. It'll be amazing. I'm noticing uh, these actually look like, uh, yeah, they are real motors that he's implemented yeah. into the uh, into the uh, fuselage or the, the ship. Yeah. So there's a lot that went into this build and we'll have a more in-depth video for sure on this and make sure to check that out if you want more details because it's, it's definitely uh, a pretty unique build here at the show. But if we move around this direction, uh, what do we have here? It looks like we've got a bunch of old cars so if there's one thing i know less about than pop culture it's probably cars so i'm not gonna like recognize any of these but if you guys see any that like you feel is like a really cool design or your favorites then uh feel free to point them out well i can already make a prediction that matt is going to talk about the mustangs <laughs> because matt matt is about well, yeah go for it matt. yeah i'm a huge mustang guy so right here we got the 69 ford mach 1 mustang and over on the right we have the 1967 eleanor shelby gt500 mustang from the movie gone in 60 seconds okay and they, they look like great models. I'm assuming they, they captured the, the real car well there. Absolutely. Okay. Very nice. Who was the builder on that? Uh, looks like uh, Andrew. Okay. Andrew Waters. Andrew yeah, Waters. shout out to Andrew there. Good stuff. Hold on. And then some more, I think, of, of his builds here as well. So uh, cool mech stuff. Giant tank from Warhammer. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love a giant tank like that? That's amazing. Um, <laughs> I think Warhammer is a video game, if I'm not mistaken. I've actually not played it, but I've seen the trailer um, or some of the previews and seen that tank and the concept art, and it's captured beautifully. And then down here, we've got like a decaying sort of city. Uh, so you've got the tracks all run, run down, boarded up. It looks like it's abandoned pretty yep. much at this point. Tunnels all collapsed over there <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> Yep, streets breaking up, grass is kind of growing up through the ground in between the cracks. Mm-hmm. And then, let's see, well, I think we'll turn over here and hit this cap. So this is something, uh, I think we've shown pretty much all of this. The builder might have added a little bit, but this, this has been coming to Brickworld for a number of years. I think it's I said 2007 is when it first, first was built. Uh, so I think pretty much every brick world that we've recorded videos at, uh, this build has been featured and uh, just always incredible to see it. There's so many details. Um, it's awesome. So I actually heard about a disaster that occurred with this particular mock. Apparently, uh, the guy who created it actually had it all packed up in uh, his trailer and uh, he had a mechanic working on it and apparently uh, they did a brake test and the whole thing just crashed right into the back of the van. <laughs> That is not what you want with your builds when you're coming here. I remember seeing the aftermath of that. Yeah, Dale, Dale was devastated, but he came back strong. I mean, I, you know, I've talked to him a lot. He's always thinking of new things to put in this mock and, and always just, uh, it's just a continuation of epicness. I, I love it. Being a medieval fan, it, it especially speaks to me. I just, there's a lot of great. Uh, I think a uh, continuation of epicness is a good way to describe yeah, yeah, yeah. this. There you go. Yeah. yeah, I like that a lot. So we'll show a little more. Uh, details down this end as well and then we'll move across the aisle here and check check this out uh, first though we'll actually we'll keep going this direction this will be easier for, for us to show with the cameras as we go down here so again we, we got to figure out the best direction to make sure we show everything so this is the I believe the Northern Illinois Lego train club so yep. kind of one of the, the yep these are my guys okay. we're local to uh, Northern Illinois uh, around Chicago a little bit in Wisconsin Indiana as well and uh, over here we have Chris's display right here these iconic buildings that you'll see every year 
Mm -hmm. And then uh, as we keep kind of yeah. going around and you here. can kind of take us around then if you want since you're more familiar This is kind of the home team here at Brick World, right? Right. Okay, so down here. We've got uh, Carrie's boardwalk here She's put a lot of work into this lately. She's a relatively new member mm -hmm. We keep going we will see Rogers fantastic city setup Been going for at least 10 years I remember coming and seeing this as a kid wanting to join him finally gonna hopefully do that this summer <laughs> There you go, you know always always new challenges there <laughs> Yep, here we got uh, the Sears Tower. It'll always be the Sears Tower to me, local in <laughs> <of> Chicago. <laughs> Forget the Willis None Tower. None of these newfangled names, you know. <laughs> yep. That might be the tallest building at the show. Certainly one of the tallest, if not if not the yeah, tallest yeah. here. Uh, that's, that's pretty crazy. It looks like there's lighting all up in there as well. I do believe it is. Yep. Down here we got the little uh, pizzeria, kind of a, an expansion of the old uh, set from the 90s. Mm -hmm. That was actually my first Lego set right there. Really? Yeah. That always, whenever I see that, it reminds me of the Lego Island games where you would like throw the pizzas at the characters. Have you guys ever yeah, played yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's always cool. Over here, if you want to check it out, Roger's wife made this, uh, Big Bucks Coffee. <laughs> And the Krispy Kreme dumping out front, you know, the yep. cops showed up on the scene quickly there. Yep, they're having a field day. <laughs> Looks like we have some maybe uh, pigs going to market, uh, maybe? I don't okay, know. Okay, yeah. Know. Yeah, maybe. The little truck there to coin a pun. I don't know if that was, oh, that was probably not even good. Uh, <laughs> and all, all of the all of the rats on top of the White Castle, you know, I'm not sure if that's like a statement about, <laughs> about White Castle food. We'll just let that stand there. <laughs> Kind of looks like it's the Piper over there who's yeah, actually awesome. leading them. <laughs> yep, down here we've got a suburb. Uh, I can't remember whose display this is, but uh, pretty accurate to real life. You know, concrete strip mall right here. Mm -hmm. Lots of stores you can kind of see in behind there. You know, detailing that I've actually never really seen in a mock before. This is the first time, and, and Matt, you and I have, have, have seen this before, but I never even noticed this. It's how they have the, the divider here, kind of the, the curb, by on only uh, one tile raise, and it works perfectly. I've that is, that's a really good idea. A slight little, one of those slight little techniques that's, you know, it's a little nuanced in the build, but it just, it goes, it works well. Yep, right here we have the uh, amazing brick tracks, wide radius curves. These make it so that you can run much longer trains around the tracks because the standard uh, R40 curves from Lego just don't cut it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. brick tracks, fantastic product. There we go, yeah. So I, I noticed, I think train builders, maybe more than any other, you know, type of builder in the LEGO community, tend to customize and try to adapt stuff as much as possible to improve their layouts. Yeah, LEGO definitely isn't on top of, uh, you know, supporting our hobby as, you know, brick model railroaders, but uh, we do it ourselves and we get by. It looks good. Mm -hmm. And then some stuff by Matt Delanoy, who's a, a great builder, been around for a lot of years, and we featured some of this stuff in past videos, but... Uh, all sorts of cool. I think it's the fifth element build there uh, that he's got the, the battle scene going on. Uh, some other. Do you know what this is from? Uh, this looked like yeah, this looks like it's, uh, Samus. I can't remember the name of the game. Is uh, it Metroid? Possibly. Metroid. Yes. Yeah, okay. Metroid. That just came to me for some reason. <laughs> yep. There we go. And then who do we have over here? Uh, not familiar with this. But some cool characters. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, check out the skulls on the base of this build right here. <laughs> And then let's see, another build by Matt is the Ram. I think this is like a, an eating era a restaurant near Brick World. Yeah, I believe this is an actual building that he replicated. Um, if I'm not mistaken, everybody from the club did a building from Geneva, Illinois at some point. And, uh, you know, after that collab was done, he just kind of repurposed it as part of his layout. Mm -hmm. Down here, you've got uh, Western Town, some more of an older take on the city layout. Yep, this is from the movie Blazing Saddles. Okay. Yep, so as you can see, it's actually kind of a back lot. If you look uh, kind of in there, you can see the, uh, the lights hanging from above. Mm -hmm. And then keep following the train tracks down. Uh, oh, back to, back to the Future here. Yep, this is the town square from Back to the Future. As you can see, we got the DeLorean over there in the back. Got to hit 88 miles per hour. <laughs> So we started with uh, the Rick and Morty, and this is kind of the inspiration for that there. So yeah, something, something really cool from this area here, these uh, power line towers. I thought those were great. Yeah, the lattice work on those with the, I guess, is that the Technic pieces? Yeah, with the, uh, with the wands and like the staff mm -hmm. pieces. That's really interesting. Yeah, and the coils there with the the one by one mm -hmm. plates. It's cool to see the level of detail in there because a lot of times for power lines, people just kind of hang up the the simplest design possible, with just like you know a couple strings going. But that's some really cool detail. Yep, over here we've got a giant tractor. 
and um, not sure. I think this is Chris's as well. Uh, that's all I really have to say about that. Cool lighting there. Yeah. <laughs> Over here we got some trains. Look like a couple different takes on the original uh, BNSF GP38 model that came out many moons ago. Okay. And here is like the, I guess you'd call this the friends party train. That was my first thought. This is done by Chris Rozek as well. Uh, so crazy. It looks like they packed the cars in here with Unikitty and friends dolls and things. You know, Matt, there looks like there's a familiar mock or two around here. You want to <laughs> tell us about some stuff you got? All right. So right here, uh, the orange locomotives here, these are mine. And then also the black tank cars in the back there. There's a total of 16 of them. I went a little crazy with them. Uh, you know, NILCC doesn't have a ton of trains right now. So I figured, you know, I'm going to start building some rolling stock for them. Fill up their rail yard. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah, that's a crazy amount. You can see how long it goes all the way down there. So uh, very impressive. <laughs> A lot of black pieces it took there. <laughs> yep, right here we have um, Chicago Metra. These are the commuter trains that run from basically out to the suburbs to downtown. You see them everywhere. You can't miss them. <laughs> if you visit Chicago, I'm sure you'll ride on those possibly throughout your visit. Yep, it's utterly iconic at this point. And I think that brings us back uh, to the beginning here of, of this then. So, yeah, that's the whole uh, Northern Illinois uh, train club layout. And so then we'll keep going I guess we'll keep going down this way. Uh, this is the easiest way to do it. We'll hit this right here with Okie Lug. And so this is the uh, massive, Okie Lug is I think the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Lug. And so if you're in that area, this is the Lug for you. They, a couple members brought some crazy stuff. The, the most impressive here is, this is Mark Stevens. He calls it the Brickmore. It's built based on the Biltmore uh, Mansion. Uh, and it just so many details, the lighting inside, all the little different, uh, you know, stuff above the door, the archways and everything. Wow. Awesome. That, that's all I have to say is just, <laughs> wow. It's, yeah. Wow. I've never had a chance to visit the, the real life building this is based on. Uh, someday I will make it there. Whoa. Quick, quick uh, behind us here. <laughs> Man down! <laughs> that's, that's a, you know, that kind of stuff can happen at Brick World when you aren't careful. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we'll keep going after that and hope that all gets cleaned up. Yeah. yeah. Let us know in the comments how many bricks was that in that stack. <laughs> there you go. Moving, uh, <laughs> cool ride here. And then this is what looks like a, like a fish tank here, which is kind of neat. So, uh, no real water, but they've got the ducks on top and then all the fish underneath. I like that. Under the sea. Under, yeah, one now John will sing for us throughout the rest of the video. I've actually not seen that movie though. So. <laughs> All right, so this here is uh, called the Gray Track Era, and these are some really old trains. Uh, I think these are actually, they might be 3 volt, I'm not sure, but they're battery powered and, uh, actually no, they're not battery powered, they have the electrical rail running down the middle there of the track. And uh, yeah, a lot of throwbacks here. I actually have some of these sets at home. Yeah. A lot of nostalgia right here. Right, like the old shell stuff. The shell stuff is always like classic Lego whenever you see that. I love those old builds. And then some more kind of post-apocalyptic. This is the Lost World. Uh, characters fighting, lots of rundown buildings and everything. All sorts of cool stuff to see in there. Here's some sort of Bionicle type build. Some of this reminds me of uh, I just before this show we were in the Japan Brick Fest in Japan and certainly saw you know you've got like the CMRI looking build there. Uh, that type of stuff is very popular that uh, in Japan. So uh, that's what a lot of these builds remind me of. But there's some cool some cool details in here. It's always interesting to see you know people incorporate uh, Bionicle with Technic with regular system brick and, and kind of bring builds like that together. I, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got a VN Roll here. I like that. Kind of a, a cleaner, simpler looking build. And then uh, Union Camp, both by the same builder, uh, McCarthy, there. And walk around here, check out. Here's the, <laughs> the Panda Express. I like that. <laughs> so uh, I'm not always the biggest train fan, but stuff like that I, is, is pretty good. <laughs> you might say that pun is uh, <clears throat> unbearable. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> and then a Seasons build there as well to go along with the theme. Uh, and then four Seasons of Nexo Knights. So Nexo Knights, I'll, I'll get you guys' take on this. What, what, what do you guys think? Because I know this is kind of a contentious theme within the community. Some people think it has some cool stuff. Other people don't really get what it's all about. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely miss the old castle. It's not the same. <laughs> not at all. It has a lot of cool parts. I've actually never seen a Four Seasons of Nexo Knights, and it, it works. I like the color schemes. 
it kind of heralds back to Exo Force for me, which is always near and dear to my heart. So I guess there's a there's a little bit of a soft spot in my heart for an Exo Knights. And then let's. Uh, you're good. No, you're good. No, keep talking. We don't want to interrupt you. We'll just show the build here real quick. So that's a big, awesome space build there as well. <laughs> So you'll notice as we walk around, uh, there's uh, a lot of, there can be people here, and we, we try not to, to get in the way of anyone as we're doing this video, uh, but still show all the builds. <laughs> so this is a whole uh, western town here as well. Uh, you got Hotel and the Undertakers. The Undertaker is always a classic feature of the western towns. All of the, the like caskets out front. <laughs> yeah, I bet building that was quite an uh, undertaking, but um, yeah, we've got, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Joshua was not acknowledging my <laughs> And then, I, mean, yeah. I think the, the, the end of this square is this building here, which I don't know if there's a mock card, so I, I can't, or maybe this is part of the, the Biltmore build. Maybe, yeah. Possibly like a farmhouse or gateway yeah. entrance to it, to the manor. Uh, but the, you look at the, the tiling, I think it's like all cheese slope pieces on the roof there. That's crazy. Uh, and the different colors just put so much detail in there. I love that. Yep, looks expensive. <laughs> yes, exactly. Some builds just look expensive. <laughs> So we'll keep going down here then and keep making our way this direction. So now we'll hit, I think we'll actually actually cut over here. We'll kind of split the room in half and go this, uh, this half and then come back over here. So here we have what I think is Gamer Lug and Gamer Lug always brings some cool stuff related uh, to obviously games. And so there's a lot of like video game weapons and all sorts of stuff. We've got one of the builders back here. Oh, it's, Bryce. <laughs> it's Bryce. Do you want to come out real quick and give an overview of what you have? So we'll just, <laughs> I'm sure we'll do uh, an in-depth video on some of your stuff as well, but uh, well, you, can, you can give a quick overview here and maybe actually talk about Gamer Lug in general and, and what you guys do. Sure, our theme this year, uh, you'll see it mostly on the other side, is we wanted to do a collaboration from the game Rainbow Six Siege, uh, a game that they've been spending a lot of time on, probably too many hours per day. <laughs> so they, they all wanted to honor that with a defending tribute. We may be having some fun and games with that uh, in a couple days, but we'll see about that. But for my part, it was mostly just assorted vitamins and minerals from different video games uh, and just laying them out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the M1 Garand is great here. You've got your TSA, uh, you know, baggage inspection. Oh, yeah, this was, <laughs> this was a fun one. Uh, there's, there's a backstory to this. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, well, well, we'll make sure to chat with you more in depth on that later, but thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and keep coming around here. We've got some, I think, Overwatch stuff there. Uh, and then we'll see, was, was Overwatch the game that LEGO just uh, entered into like a partnership with? Yes, I believe it was. Okay. So, yeah, so you might see, like I guess, official LEGO stuff coming from Overwatch, which is very surprising to me when they made that announcement. Not the typical, you know, LEGO license that you would expect, but, uh, you know, I guess we'll see where they take it. Halo build there by Simon. Uh, a bunch of cars here. Okay, so this looks like a collaboration with uh, Caleb, Evan, and... They just Caleb and Evan okay. did this. So, oh, and there's Marcus's. Uh, I think one of Marcus's cars over there too. So these guys, these guys are great builders. It just looks like they had a bunch of fun. They're like, hey, let's build a, uh, let's build kind of a garage scene or something. I'm wondering if this is maybe from based Grand on Forza. It says the Forza shop. Know, is that like a motorsport? Oh, okay. Yeah, that from Forza Motorsport. Yeah, looks like they had a lot of fun with it. So. Really cool techniques throughout. Yeah, I mean those car builds are always always impressive. Then here's a giant weapon from something I don't recognize, but you can see a smaller character there more detail so I, I it's very cool and it's very I'm, big i'm either going to get love or hate for this in the comments it reminds me of a hammer from fortnite but that's okay. not, yeah, yeah close enough you know <laughs> uh then here is i think uh bryce uh, you know referenced this earlier so this is the whole uh rainbow six siege uh collab um and so yeah a bunch of a bunch of different builders represented here all different weapons uh big stuff small stuff everything here so even some like mosaic type builds, and then I, I like the, what they've done, like the barbed wire yeah, design around the yeah. outside. Yeah, it's kind of a yeah, that's really nice border and very appropriate for the theme. So cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a little bit more here from Gamer Lug. Uh, I think uh, this section is Nick Jensen, who's just obviously a prolific uh, you know video game uh, replica builder, uh, incredible stuff. Uh, check his stuff out, uh, Nick Jensen, Nick Brick on online, uh, crazy stuff. Yep, last year's Brick World Master, actually. Okay, there you go, yeah. So, I mean, I think that speaks for itself on, on how talented he is <laughs> as well. It's, it's always amazing to see what he brings to shows. 
And then here's some actual, I think, Fortnite stuff. <laughs> so this week we know for sure. <laughs> okay, well, I, I love Fortnite. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. So you've actually played this game. I have. Uh, a few too many hours, actually. So, <laughs> Slight addiction. <laughs> no, 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 not, not at all, not at all. But um, yeah, just, just some really incredible builds here. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I especially appreciate the llama, uh, just based on how rare of a build it is, how rare they are in the video game. Um, they're just always fun to see. And, yeah. What is the story behind the llama? Because I, so I've seen this build and I've like seen people talk about that, but what? I have no idea, honestly. Okay. I think it's just part of the, the Fortnite universe, Matt, do you know? Or so yeah, Fortnite's just kind of a goofy game and there's loot inside of these. You know, you bust them up with a pickaxe and uh, you know, get building materials and other stuff. Mm -hmm. There you go. So then you've got uh, Nick also built the Fortnite pickaxe there, so. Uh, some cool Fortnite builds. And then Dan Church, uh, another great builder, built these awesome, uh, I think, Super Mario Odyssey builds. Uh, and just such a slick, like, clean look to these. Uh, I love what he's done there. It's always neat to see what angles he can capture with, with these builds. There's always really cool detailing. Yeah. And even the capes, it looks like he used for the covering of a, of a light there. Is that, mm -hmm. am I wrong about that? Yeah, it looks like something like that. So. Shout out to Eclipse Graphics here. I think made the, the Mario minifig awesome work. Uh, always check out. At, check out that booth if you're around at a show or, or check out the stuff online. Uh, so then I think that takes us back to the, the beginning of the gamer lug. And so we'll head this way then and <laughs> see what else we have here. <laughs> it looks like we've got a couple of lighthouses to start off. So the blue lighthouse uh, by April Fisher here, uh, kind of, you know, not rounded design by using uh, you know kind of the hinge pieces that allow you to, to get the the different angled sides I like the spiral effect that's going up and it kind of reminds me of the, the barbershop bar the optical illusion it looks really mm -hmm. neat here yeah and then coming around here you got the truck stop uh, Noah's Ark build here <laughs> so you've got all the different animals and stuff in there and then all those old are those some classic like blue base plates there that's interesting. Oh, on the bottom? Yeah. Um, okay. Those are actually, yeah, they are genuine Lego parts um, from what I understand. And I actually am not familiar with what they're from at all. Um, Matt, do you know? What they're Might be from a Rock Raiders set, if I'm not mistaken. I know they in the Rock Raiders video game, they had, you know, ice caverns with, you know, shards protruding from the walls of the caves and whatnot. So it kind of makes sense. Sure, yeah. But those, those work really well for that type of thing, kind of the wave effect. And then again by April, this other lighthouse here, more traditional looking with the, the red and white there. Uh, you've got a series of mosaic char characters, uh, and again, another example of sort of a different way to do mosaics. These are all, I think, one-by-one one studs uh, depicting all of the characters here, so uh, that's another cool technique for mosaics. Uh, and then you've got, here's a cool depiction of a book. Uh, let's see, Gravity Falls. It looks like it's from Gravity Falls, and it's got the, you know, depicting the, co the cover of the book that you see right there. Uh, cool trucks and stuff. I think this was one of the, the Brickworld kits, if I'm not mistaken, in three, four years ago, maybe, something like that. The Brickworld, like, event kit. So this is interesting. The, uh, these are moving, which obviously is an eye catcher, but it looks to me as if the entire base of, uh, of uh, Bullock's Wil Wilshire is moving. And I'm, I'm really curious how that was even accomplished with it. If we go down, uh, the lighting's not too yeah, great it doesn't look uh, maybe it's on a motorized lazy susan do you think something like that yeah it's just kind of spinning it around yeah, slowly on, yeah the los angeles the la city hall yeah interesting so i think Very. these are done by bruce heller which is uh yeah he does some awesome architectural work and has done some some great great work over the years i think he's got like all the different uh mayors of los angeles there so lots of lots of fun details he puts in there yeah. uh then you've got some elves based builds and coming down, you've got, uh, let's see, I think these are built by uh, Shane. Uh, so some cool stuff here. He's got, I love the, the Wonder Woman stuff is awesome. I love, big fan of Wonder Woman, uh, particularly the, the latest movie that came out uh, and showing, you know, the World War I trench scene in there, awesome scene. What do we, this is something that John really wants to touch. Well, let's see. So it says spin me slowly, please. So it looks as if we have uh, kind of like the one build over, over there that we saw. It looks like we have a changing of seasons with Brickworld themes. Mm -hmm. So very, very appropriate for the theme of Brickworld is seasons, right? Yeah. It. yeah, so interesting. Good, good build. Steam City. And then Mushroom Patch and let's see, Spaceport there. 
and then some Ice Planet 2012 stuff here. So some take on the old like Ice Planet stuff. Mm -hmm. I, was, I never uh, was able to get my hands on one of those of these uh, Lego sets, but I'm very fond of the theme. It has some really neat color schemes and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some bigger Bionicle characters, even like uh, it's a Hulk there in in the back, something like that. So Loki and everything, the Quake Mech, uh, Ninjago. So some Ninjago related builds, and then giant Tie Fighter. Yeah, I kind of wonder whether or not uh, he just ran out of parts here, or he wanted to do a you know an under construction Tie Fighter. Generally, in my experience, if they if they have the under construction section, it's because they ran out of parts or time. Well, <laughs> judging actually from this, it seems that a lot of it was done on purpose because if you take a look at the construction of the side panel here, how it's attached, those bricks aren't underneath those slopes, so okay. it looks like this is kind of an anatomical version of what a Tie Fighter looks mm -hmm. like. It's specific schematics that technicalities that lie under, underneath those panels so it looks like an awesome build but yeah it's it cool swooshable at that. <laughs> cool to see something of that size for the tie fighter and then here's a big like dinosaur type build very angry looking uh beast <laughs> yes uh, and then a little maze build amazing mm -hmm. as always <laughs> and then, uh, garden trellis here, which I think is just a really unique, cool idea with Lego. I'm not sure if I've ever seen anything like this. Certainly at this scale, I don't think I've seen this before, uh, with all the flowers and the greenery throughout this. Uh, so this was built by Alyssa Kirkpatrick, uh, who's uh, a great builder uh, from from the area. And so all, always cool to see what she brings to shows. So always some, some unique creations. This is, again, another one of those instances where we're seeing Technic combined with Bionicle, combined with regular system bricks, and it flows beautifully here in this uh, awesome garden trellis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll make our way around here, and so this is some smaller boats and stuff. I think they were racing some of these earlier? Yeah, if you crane your neck, you can see this awesome crane here uh, with Spider-Man on it and uh, some really interesting builds that are underneath. I wonder, do you think the crane is can support these builds? Is it like a transport? or? I'm not sure if that's related or if it's just kind of showing off like a cool build along with... I know the, these like speedster things here, they were racing earlier, oh. so it looks like they even gave out trophies. Yeah. Uh, so, and then some more Bionicle type. I like the, the scare Scarecrow builds there. And, yeah, all sorts of cool stuff. All the, the green eyes on that one. And then some great, some more Stranger Things builds. So, obviously, the show's very popular. It's not surprising that you run into multiple builds uh, from the show here. So, you've got all the characters in, like, Brickhead style. And then, I guess, would that be sort of Miniland style for those other ones? Sort of something along those lines? Yeah, I don't, um, I haven't talked to Casey that much. But I do know, I'm pretty sure he's known for his kind of, like, mini land or uh, kind of Brickhead things in addition to some mosaics. So, he's done a great job with this whole uh, Lego Stranger Things exhibit. Really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Casey McCoy, uh, awesome stuff there. And then here's a nice city layout. Not not a lot going on here. It's a, it's a cleaner, not so busy city than you normally see. Yep, you got the uh, the old good old Mickey D's right there. Chili's in the back. Yep, actually, I think that uh, that Chili's there is actually the instructions are available to download somewhere. Really cool looking oh, yeah. building. I like it. Big building here and then some of these ships we were looking at these earlier and i definitely want to point out uh the costa concordia here in the title there uh the chicken of the sea <laughs> i like that on the the titling there so so that's pretty good <laughs> uh, i think some some little jokes like that thrown in with these uh obviously you know tragedies with the boats there and you know you, you can also see that they thought of me when building this because they have this brick here a very special <laughs> brick that i need to remember more that's of. the john clapeak brick that's the john clapeak brick yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, good stuff. So there are, you've got vendors here in the middle. So this show is kind of interesting. They've got vendors around the outside and then as well, like an aisle down the middle here. There's a lot of awesome stuff you can purchase if you ever come uh, to the show. Uh, definitely have a look at that. But those are all covered up. So we're going to come down here and we'll just start right here in the middle and, and do the square and keep going with the builds. Uh, so this is an awesome Men in Black build by Brian Williams, whose work has been, you know, a staple of Brickworld shows for a lot of years, and we've talked about different big layouts he's done. This is his latest build. It spins and has a whole bunch of scenes from the different Men in Black movies. Oh, right. uh, there's lighting in there. He even has it set up to, like, have, have quotes from the movie as you look at certain scenes and stuff. It's, it's crazy, yeah. Uh, so this is so cool. We'll definitely have a more, you know, in-depth build with Brian talking about all the different details of that, because when it's actually on and everything, it's very cool. 
So here's a model of the third temple. Uh, so some like a biblical based uh, temple builds here. There's a big, uh, another temple that we'll see later as well. Uh, so you see some larger versions here. Some smaller characters. Looks like you got like black and white going on and then the blue and white, so color schemes and stuff. Even animal based models there. Smaller vignettes here. Uh, this builder decided to lay out some candy, so you know, an extra snack there if you're getting hungry as you're checking out the show. Afternoon swim. I think with a lot of the like superhero, like Batman characters and stuff. And then a power miners built. So you don't see a ton of power miners stuff. Kind of a, a kind of an overlooked theme. Yeah, it's it's kind of become an extinct uh, theme in Lego, and I'm really glad to see that uh, Murphy and Matt brought it back to mm -hmm. back to life because it's it was a glorious theme. I loved it. Yeah, speaking of bringing things back, now that they've uh, they've revived Teal, I want to see a Rock Raiders reboot. Let's make it happen. Yes. <laughs> there you go. I think some people can do some awesome stuff with it. <laughs> and got the salesman. Fox in the snow, and then this, it's yeah. Interesting, this is interesting. <laughs> this is a great example of forced perspective with Lego, and above all, using plates, which are kind of oftentimes a clumsy part to deal with, but it looks like Amanda here has done a phenomenal job with it. As you see it, it's kind of reminds me of like one of those 3D cards that you might find, or a children's book pop. I mean, it just really looks incredible. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah, so many different uh, levels of scenery there. If you look at it from the side as well, it's like uh, you can you can get an idea of the perspective that that she achieved there. Definitely. Uh, and then next to that, I believe also by Amanda as well as uh, Jesse is this uh, Kubo and the Two Strings uh, here. So it's inspired by the the book, and you can see that the artwork on display. Uh, the wave here, I think, is particularly interesting. I'm not even sure what pieces those. Like, so like the new claw piece, maybe like from China. Yeah, it looks or like like a white and trans clear, like trans blue piece. Uh, claw do you think piece. It took to set each of the. <laughs> that's incredible. Wow. Some some dedication there, uh, and then the micro micro village is awesome as well. Then here, uh, coming around the corner, we've got some rides. I think these are by Dave Guan. Uh, I think we've we've shown some of these in the past. <laughs> I know he struggled with, uh, you know. Uh, John, you were talking about uh, uh, some of the struggles with like people's builds breaking and stuff and some things yeah. like that. So yeah. uh, I think I think Dave might have had some of that happen with these. Uh, so they might not be totally put together, but you know there's some really cool stuff when these are all running. Even if they're not totally together, they still look like impressive builds there with all the angling that he's done. And it looks like a fun fun setup. Mm -hmm. Keep coming around. You got some World War II builds there. Uh, here's kind of, it's like maybe a uh, French town with uh, the French citizens rising up against some, some Germans here. I like that. And a shipping city area. Normandy farm. Uh, and then let's see, what do we have here? A bunch of the, okay. The Duplo characters are pretty different. I'm not sure I've, I've seen that type of wow, thing. Wow, <laughs> that's really cool. That is that is a perfect example of combining all the different types of, of system mm -hmm. bricks together. Interesting. That has a lot of new possibilities now. <laughs> I think about it. And then here is I think some Frank Lloyd Wright designed houses. So the Seth Peterson cottage. You've got the Zimmerman house. And the Edward uh, Boynton house, New York. So it's always cool to see Frank Lloyd. I know Frank Lloyd Wright, obviously a very yeah. famous architect and I think uh, popular among Lego builders as well with a lot of his work. Definitely, definitely. Great bridge and some, some big uh, famous buildings here like the CN Tower. I believe you can find that in Toronto. I'm noticing a lot of, um, I'm actually not familiar with the builder, but it looks like Riley uh, built these and a lot of the techniques that have been incorporated in this are a use of plates being stacked together or angled at very, uh, at very um, risky angles that are, I'm sure, are reinforced because they're, they're standing and they look awesome. If I were to try it, it would fall over. So, <laughs> so props on a wonderful job yes. well done. Hopefully not, that does not end in disaster there. <laughs> And some more city layouts with what appears to be some like monkeys invading like mechs and some craziness happening in this city. <laughs> the Lego store, always cool. A little bit of uh, Empire propaganda there from Darth Vader <laughs> yes. and, uh, and Emperor Palpatine in list today. <laughs> he can't do it alone. <laughs> he can't do it alone. 
I also like how the, so they have the green army men going in and then the like clone trooper Star Wars guys coming out there. Yeah, really interesting how over here on kind of where the road curves, they actually managed to incorporate the track into the road while keeping the curve there. It's all pretty flush and level. Oh, wow. Yeah, you don't see that too often. No, no. That's, that's really difficult, especially keeping, like you were saying, everything flush together and, and getting the parts and the colors properly aligned. That took a bit of thinking, definitely. And then you got some more monkeys on the lighthouse in the harbor area. Uh, here's a wow. whole giant bunch of, I think, brickhead style builds you would you would are. So, uh, looks like, is this all Star Wars or, or most, mostly Star Wars? There's some Blade Runner stuff here as well, but it looks like mostly Star Wars. Definitely, yeah. Brickheads as mocks are very interesting to build, especially under pressure. I had an experience last night where it was a building competition, had to kind of, anyway. But, uh, looks like, uh, Eli here has done just a brilliant job with the, with the Star Wars ones. I, yeah, I want to build them all myself. <laughs> I think just about every character there you can pick out if you, if you look long enough. Even the band and everything. <laughs> and then around here, let's see what we have around the corner here. It looks like maybe a series of Star Wars scenes? Yeah, it looks like an interior of the Death Star, okay. actually. So, you know, he's got the turbo lift on the, on the left there. And then on the right here, you've got uh, like a mess hall, it looks like. Down below, you've got uh, a theater. Can't see what they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> we can walk in, in if we want there. and. Familiar. Yeah, wait, not familiar oh, with wait, this. That, um... Oh, wait, that's uh, that's the YMCA. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have seen that before, yes. Yeah, there you go, you figured it out. <laughs> Don't knock over the signs here and we'll keep going around. Uh, but this, this uh, like, terraforming cruiser is pretty awesome here, so. I saw, yeah, I saw Daniel set this up earlier and uh, he had to, I think, first lie this thing on its side in order to make sure that none of the angles split apart and then it's suspended by some fishing line there. And that's quite the feat of a build. That is amazing. Really interesting end going there. I'll have to talk to him later about how he was able to accomplish some of that. Yeah, sometimes suspending things is half the battle when, when building a mock like this. Mm -hmm. I think he's got like clamped down on the back of the table, so that's pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, and then here's kind of a classic trench run. So this is, uh, you know, a lot of builders have given their kind of take and approach on this, and it's always interesting to see the different ways that it plays out, but the level of detail and everything. A lot of greebling here, uh, and then like the mi the micro ships going in. So I like trench that. Run, trench run is always something that's always just a classic Star Wars build. I love seeing it recreated in Lego. Always satisfying. Yeah. And let's see, a Harry Potter experience here. So I'm going to guess as I think Lego is re-releasing Harry Potter sets again. So I think we'll probably see more Harry Potter in the future uh, and see more and more layouts like what you have here. It's always, it's always great to see some Harry Potter builds here, especially with the, uh, the, the Quidditch patch or the, uh, the Quidditch pitch, I mm -hmm. should say. Um, and it looks like actually that they may be motorized, judging from the uh, gaps that right. lie in the base. I'm going to guess those can move around when it's all turned on. Definitely. Yeah, loving the platform nine and three quarters over here. Uh, yeah. The gingerbread man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually looks like they incorporated bits of uh, the original set into the larger platform that they created here. So you kind of recognize the original stuff, but obviously they've taken it and made something much bigger and cooler out of it. So yeah, quite the, quite the large Harry Potter layout there. It'll be cool to see what builders do with that in the future. And then some vignettes, smaller scenes, ice skating rink, uh, got a California beach house. And then here's an interesting detail. So it looks like this builder took like their paintings and incorporated them into the Lego builds here. And that's, sometimes you see photos, but like I think those appear to be actual paintings. Yeah, it's always, always a pleasure to see kind of multiple art mediums mm -hmm. put into a mock. That's just really cool. Awesome work. Mm -hmm. Big sort of mech battle here. And then Sky World, John Wolf. So this thing is, is pretty crazy. It's got three different sections there, whirling everybody around, and then it stops to let new people on the ride and everything. So this looks like it's it's going pretty strong here. I don't even know how I, I don't even know where I would start on something like that because <laughs> it's it's perfectly timed. It's everything is mm -hmm. just precise. It's it's incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. It really is when you when you think about all of the like technology and like the, the engineering to get something to run properly like that. Uh, it blows me away. Yeah, there's the, there's the builder right over there. Yeah, good. Excellent, excellent work. <laughs> yes. Uh, then you've got this paper stuff here. So they, we've seen a number of these at different shows, but it's, again, kind of moving uh, the marker around to create cool different designs on the paper. 
Yep, over here we have uh, Rainbow Six Siege mock. You can see the windows are all boarded up, and uh, you know there's metal uh, bars on the, the back there. Um, and it looks like the uh, bomb that they're maybe trying to defuse is in the middle there. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's the same game as the collab at Gamerlog, right? Yes, okay. it is. There we go. So, you know, another take on that. <laughs> And then you've got a cool building. I like the, the green and gold mixture there. Uh, beautiful architecture here. Yeah, the Laurent House by, by Christopher here is just astounding. I'm looking at a lot of the, the curved uh, plating and then the, even the tiling up top. I, I'm, I'm an architecture fan, so obviously <laughs> I'm going to like stuff like this. This is very neat. Mm -hmm. Good job. Lego and architecture go hand in hand. Above that, I think we've got on the right, you've got like a Pokemon-inspired uh, build. And then on the left... It might be, I'm not sure, it's hard to see with the, the lenticular mosaic here to make out when you're looking Mystique. at it straight on. Yeah, what Mystique is the title of the mock. Okay. I'm unsure if that is a reference that I should know or maybe just some really awesome creation. But yeah, I, there you go. So I think that brings us back to the beginning of this section. So let's walk down here and we'll go around and keep showing you all this cool stuff on display here. So lots of... Lots of amazing builds. We'll keep working down this, this half of the giant show floor. And it looks like Joe's Brick Depot has a lot of covered up. We'll just show this side real quick and then keep going down. Uh, some more great trains here. Uh, I like all of that. I think that's all like stickery to add the details. Yep, really cool grain elevator there. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of curved panels. <laughs> Takes a while to collect all that. <laughs> and then the Toys R Us truck, why pay less somewhere else? <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, that's just harsh with Toys R Us going out of business here in, here in the United States at least. <laughs> really rubbing it in. And here's a possibly like 3D printed, it looks like, uh, the Marshmallow Man uh, from Ghostbusters. Maybe paper mache or something? Actually, you know what? It does look 3D printed. Yeah, 3D now printed. they're looking. Like yeah, definitely. Yep, and you can see there's the chilies again. That's kind of <laughs> prolific. <laughs> chilies, great, great restaurant. Uh, here's like an old, I like this with the old like Islanders pieces there. That's such a cool theme. Some awesome minifigs and stuff. Uh, it had like the red canoes and everything. Some of those cool base plates they made for it, but it's cool when you see references to that. I think it's often a piece that people mistake for just kind of a side item, but you never really think of it as a facade for a building. So that's a neat, that's a neat idea. Yep, we got the Flash running down the street there. Actually, no, he's in a car. <laughs> he went so fast, he's, uh, he ended up in the car. And some more sort of modular, smaller buildings. Uh, and some great leaf work here, like fall type uh, leaf work. It's great as well. So then we'll keep going down here. And I think this takes us to uh, Rocco's builds and you know, Rocco, another builder who just, you can never say too much about his builds. His level of work just blows you away every time you see it. So many cool, iconic landmarks that he's created over the years. It's great. Yep, another Chicago native. He knows this city well. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's built all sorts of awesome stuff from Chicago over the years. I like this beach landing craft. Some uh, the military guys there. In the ice crematorium over here by Jade. <laughs> it's interesting. And here's a nice little farm build. I like the little like stone building there and the, the way they use all those pieces, a lot of sideways building as well. I like that. Some trailers, shanty town, almost looks like a, is it Ready Player One type of inspired. Yeah, yeah, I actually got to talk to, uh, to Ben earlier. Um, I think he's known as uh, number one nomad on, on Flickr. So shout out to him. He's, he's a new builder and doing really well at it. I mean, look at his, his shanty town here in the hut by the sea, incorporating a lot of really good popular techniques that just make a build look phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then coming around, I think, to some more of Rocco's work. Yeah. Uh, this looks like oh, whoa, the whoa. Copenhagen skyline what? here. It looks like he's got a sign by a number of people from Lego and everything. So uh, this is obviously with Lego being based in Denmark, the Copenhagen skyline is iconic part of the country. Yeah, yeah. I'm always, I'm always blown away by, by Rocco's uh, work. I mean, you know, um, he does the research for it. He, the building is always executed just beautifully. The parts are awesome. I can't sing his praises enough, really. It's just mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think this is his newest model here, the, the Hagia Sophia um, in Istanbul, and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous building. Constantinople. <laughs> with the, with the, now, with now you're going to start like a, a political firefight here in the comments. We don't want any of that. 
<laughs> uh, then here's the, uh, this might be my favorite build ever from Rocco. Uh, I love visiting London. It's such an incredible city. And seeing how he did such a large portion of the city here is just so cool. And you can look at this forever and pick out details and stuff. So, so I love that. Especially the cathedral over in me, Westminster Abbey just has a lot of these awesome little details in it. And uh, I remember for last year, I think he had a sound system hooked up for Big Ben. He actually sat in the courtyard near there and recorded the actual bell tolling and incorporated that in his mock. And that's just, that's so cool to be able to have such a personal connection to your mocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I think that finishes out this section. We'll go around and hit this next section here. So I think this is Lolug, which is a Lincoln and Omaha Lego users group. So these builders traveled a little bit of a distance to get here and bring all their cool displays. So here's a display technique that you see every once in a while, which is displaying on mirrors, which uh, the, the great thing about this is you can kind of see the underbelly of whatever it is that you're displaying. So if it's a plane or a ship or something, it works well. It lends itself beautifully for airplanes because you can see the underside of the fuselage, you can see all the details underneath and it just looks really cool and it's, it's fun to look at. Mm -hmm. Around here, and let's see the Bow Valley store. You've got fishermen and mermaids. I like the exotic sports uh, center, so you've got all sorts of cool little car builds there. Very nice showroom, yeah. And then what else do we have down here? So the dog park. More seasons, actually, yeah, in in in, uh, in light of the Brick World theme. So very nice placement, yeah. Yeah, I really love these tree designs. They, you know, it's really great to see the use of the different colored elements that you don't get to see too often. Really expensive, but really cool to look at. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's see, Risk. Okay, so you're creating an iconic, you know, somewhat hated, somewhat loved board game, depending on your perspective, uh, here with Lego. And <laughs> I think either way, a lot of people have, uh, you know, strong memories attached to it. For me, it was always risky business. And that's, I, I, I don't think I was ever good at this game. I've only played it a handful of times, but I bet, you know, I mean, yeah, you can play it on this and it looks like they have been uh, playing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Very fun. You've got an uh, interesting take on some kind of almost like Lego, uh, you know, fractals here. They call it like snowflake uh, builds. Kind of an increasing of uh, simplicity to complexity in the middle. So that's always fun. And then reverting back to simplicity. Mm -hmm. simplicity. Yeah. Kind of tessellation build, sort of. Yeah. Yep. Cake, look, uh, cake there looks good enough to eat. Yes. It looks like it's maybe for the 60th anniversary of the brick there, so they incorporated that. And then great train builds here once again. Yep, over here we have uh, Ben's trains. I heard him talking about these earlier. Uh, he's actually new to the hobby, I think, but uh, he really good job so far. Yeah, very realistic. Uh, he's got them in, I think, eight wide, might be nine almost, it looks like. But uh, yeah, very realistic. Really appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, over here, you've got the, the here's typical Nebraska. I guess they're kind of playing on the stereotypes there. There's, <laughs> it's just fields and animals. <laughs> and then the prehistoric creatures exhibit. Uh, uh, so it's almost like a natural history museum, sort of. Isn't it funny that the, uh, the curator of this museum seems to look like uh, John from uh, Jurassic World? Yes. yes with, the, with the amber uh, uh, kind of headpiece there for mm -hmm. the staff. And a great, I think, like a vending machine design here. This is so awesome. Yeah, looks like all cool. custom stickers on all the bottles and everything. That is really neat. Nice. Uh, and then a another true block party, as is the title yes. of this, to coin their pun. As we, yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> they were thinking of you, John, when they saw that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you got all the all the people out, you know, playing baseball, food laid out, and everything. Uh, Lego food pieces are honestly some of my favorite pieces that Lego makes. I think there's so much like cool detail in there and you can do so much and you can use them even as non-food as well some of them. You see like how the bananas and stuff are used for decoration sometime. I love those. Yeah. And then trailer park here. Lots of cool different colors on the trailers. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, so Car Henge here by Nathan Flood. I've always I've always been a fan of Nathan's builds, and this one is just, it's it's hilarious. I love it. You've got, like, the different, I guess, I wonder if, it, yeah, I've got different models of cars here, so it's almost kind of like a kind of a, clock, or a car clock time piece, sort of, as the original Stonehenge were, was, so very interesting build. Yeah, I actually think this is based off of a real thing. It might be in, like, Nevada near Vegas somewhere. No, I think you're right. It definitely sounds familiar. I know there's, like, the Nebraska. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We have someone who's, who knows what they're talking about. So it's Nebraska here, yeah. But it's certainly a, a very different take on your typical like Lego car build, so it's cool to see that. 
And then here another uh, very realistic looking train build as well, the Union Pacific. Mm -hmm. Another build, great build by Nathan. Uh, you've got the, like a droid factory area there, um, then some cool lightsabers. And we'll move around the crowd here. I do want to point out real quick this uh, awesome P-82 plane here to the, the moving parts. I think it's great. Oh, the twin Mustang. That's a, that's a plane. The P-82 is not something you normally see built at brick conventions, mm -hmm. let alone motorized ones. That's, I really like that build. You might say uh, props to the builder. Yes. I think that would be the perfect way to say that. <laughs> uh, then here is another just absolutely eye-catching build. I know a lot of people have been talking about this build at the show here. Uh, and so you get the, the lighting catches your eye right away. Uh, and then you look down and you just the build just keeps on going. It's amazing how... Uh, how far back the build goes. You know, one thing I'm noticing now is more and more people are using tire and tire pieces for, for dragons. So you can see that done for the neck, for the tail, for the arms, for the wings. That's a really, really awesome, awesome usage there. And uh, it's difficult to get those angled and, and stabilized properly. So mm -hmm. great job. This is, uh, I think, Marshall Stoneman is the build there. So is this is this your build right here? Awesome. Okay, you want to give us just like a quick overview of, of what's going on here? Yeah, so um, uh, this is a dragon. I based it off of an art piece I saw on uh, Instagram at some point. And uh, I just kind of started with the head and built out. And so um, uh, I used some uh, different techniques, like you can see the large drill parts for the neck here. And uh, I used some LEDs wrapped around some pipe for the fire effect, which I thought worked really well and then I spiraled for some clear parts around that and then I used a lot of tires because it gives it a more organic shaping to it and then I custom made these wing pieces as well oh, there so, you go yeah. so even some of your yeah. custom work there as well yeah. well thank you so much it's yeah. very impressive yeah, no <laughs> and then to finish out this section I think we've got uh, some more planes here as well uh, so it looks like a bunch of you know kind of World War II era stuff here that uh, you know the P-51D Mustang and all of that kind of stuff, the oh, P-38 Lightning and everything. And my favorite, favorite, favorite World War II airplane of all time, and the specific model of that favorite, favorite warplane of all time, is the P-51D Mustang, the big, beautiful doll. I have a uh, scale model kit of this, and mm -hmm. it's just a beautiful, beautiful plane. I love the nose art with the checkered yeah, like design. The ch exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. very unique, awesome. very different. Yeah. I, yeah, that's a great design. And lots of, you know, uh, moving propellers and everything, too, so it's always cool to see that. So that finishes out this, I think, square for us. And we'll come over here and we'll just start right here with this building and make our way around. Wow. So I think, is this, uh, this is the Great Hall? From great Hall, okay, Harry from Potter. Harry Potter. There we go. Hogwarts, yeah. Mm -hmm. Something I actually have seen, uh, just go. the first movie at least. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. yeah, very long. So I think two different sections uh, that kind of make up the, the main building here. Uh, so you can see the inside and the outside. Yeah, there's a, if, if you swing around this way, okay. you can see. If you swing around this way, you can see that there is actually another complete half of this. So it is the full Great Hall together, um, just separated so you can see all the amazing details inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, like you said, you know, even like these like gargoyle type characters almost on the wall there. I love that. We'll move back out then and come, come around this direction. Uh, the potions classroom, so another Harry Potter build here. Uh, the, the lighting with the green there is a really cool effect. Yeah, they really nailed the look of the dungeon down there. Mm -hmm. And then some le Minecraft layout. It looks like you've got some. Are these some of these are custom cars? This looks like. Are these all custom? They're, they're okay, all these are all custom. So that that's not the Porsche there. That looks that like looks, the. That looks, at first, it does. That looks like a uh, an Aventador without a tail fin. Comment section, tell me if I'm right or wrong. I bet I'm wrong on that actually. <laughs> but it's like it's either it's kind of like cross between Gallardo and Aventador, um, sort of. So something like that. You gotta, close enough. Yeah. A beautiful skyline here. GTR R34. Yep. And then a Skyline guy. Well, I know. GTR I, guy. GTR guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was telling me earlier. Yeah. One day, one day. At, le at least some, uh, two of you guys know about cars here. That's good. <laughs> uh, so then this is, I think, like Lego and Mag like Magic Tricks with Lego Bricks, which was actually a presentation at the show this year. Really? So uh, I believe this is, I don't, there's, the builder's name is not here, but... Uh, the magician uses all Lego stuff in his tricks. That's very awesome. Having been a former magician myself, I know two of these tricks and how they are done. Next, after the Great Dog Mosaic, we've got this incredible uh, Joker mosaic. I think the builder's name is Peyton Cole. And so this is from Suicide Squad, which was a movie that generally not very well liked, but uh, certainly inspired some incredible art here. 
uh, with the, the way that the builder did this. And even those base plates might be custom. I don't, I don't think Lego makes base plates in that color that I'm aware of. Somebody around here actually does those, I think, and sells them. Okay. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're like, um, yeah, they're like uh, digitally printed or something okay. like that. Something I forget like, what it's yeah. called. But, but custom, custom printed some cool colors on there. And Doc's Garage here, so it looks like you got DeLorean and Back to the Future, almost like Brickhead's uh, scale there. There's a treasure chest recipe box, so you can open that up and there's a bunch of like uh, cards with recipes on them. Cell Battle from something looks like TV show or something that I think that's based off of. And then here... I like this like construction bionicle type stuff when it's set up in an actual scene like this, kind of depicting a battle, particularly the big uh, giant that's fallen over here. Some cool stuff. A lot of great action incorporated in that mock. Uh, a little more bionicle as we move down to this section. <laughs> a true example of when Obi-Wan has the high ground. Um, <laughs> Anakin doesn't stand a chance. I'm sorry, man. I mean, Obi-Wan, look at that. Got him. There you go. <laughs> yeah. What can I say? Don't try it. <laughs> and big, big build there. I like the black build in the background. Uh, lots of details. Cool use of pieces. Some maybe working Lego weapons, rubber bands and stuff. And this is, uh, so here's an, a different take on Scarif. Uh, one, I, don't, I haven't seen a lot of this, which is like the calm before the storm. So instead of the typical battle scene that we've seen a lot of, this is kind of peaceful Scarif. You know, palm trees almost looks like a, like a paradise island. Yeah, the cargo train is regularly working. It's just another day on the, uh, on the Imperial um, Scarif base. But little do they know, the rebel scum will soon be uh, getting there before they're able to... Uh, Close the aperture. Close it. It's <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> and then, let's go. I like the colors in that build there. Some cool little micro space stuff. Looks like maybe some some builds that were even done at the show. Possibly some of this. And yeah, Mtron. Throwback to Mtron, <laughs> and a wonderful one at that. Look at this Dragonfly mm -hmm. by Edward. Wow. You That's don't see a lot of Mtron stuff like this. No, 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 not enough of it. And this is just a phenomenal build. I love the angling of the wings. And the cockpit for the uh, helicopter blade. Very ingenious. Yes. And then a beautiful cathedral here. Even like the base they've put this on is really, really different. So it, it, may, it sets the scene very nicely. It's almost like a, a painting in an art museum with the, the way they frame that. An aspiring cathedral builder myself, there are a lot of techniques that, that can be taken away from here and used in that. And uh, it's just a phenomenal build by Mark. I love it. There's mm -hmm. details everywhere, literally everywhere. Yeah. Uh, stained glass and the lights and stuff are really great. And then you've got this nice lightsaber, uh, a little bit bigger with the blue cylinder pieces there. And a micro take on Hogwarts, showing the big, uh, you know, you've got the water and the bridge and everything. Even with the, uh, the precarious staircase that leads all the way up to the first building, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Classic scene. And then here you've got uh, some jungle ruins as well. Looks like this builder's even added some extra cool like photos and stuff. Yeah, the photography is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. So it looks like uh, almost some conquistador sort of looking guys uh, exploring and everything. I like all that. And then same here as well. So the, the photography really stands out all, all around these builds. Many, many, many cool techniques there, as I'm sure you can see from the photos and the mocks themselves. Mm -hmm. Wow. And as we move down around the corner here, uh, I think we've got, uh, this is like, so a uh, brick-built game here. Do you mind just yeah. like a quick overview of what you guys are doing and how this works? Yeah. So we roll the dice here, and there are heroes, all of these guys versus the monsters, okay. me, and <laughs> I am trying to kill all of them and they are trying to get all of the relics and crystals and things. Okay. 
How, how's it going for you as the monsters? Are you winning? I am very much losing. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> finally admits it. I typically win, but I am losing now. Yeah. All right. So these are potions here. Um, they do all sorts of cool things to help us along. This is our health bar. Um, these are different items that we have equipped, um, different weapons and stuff. And a lot of this game is based on rolling dice. Um, so when you're in combat, um, you roll to see if you win or lose, take damage, or kill the monster. Um, if you roll shield, then you get to use your items or your ability, um, which is different for the different characters and different weapons, pretty much. Great, yeah. Well, it looks like a fun game, so enjoy, and I hope your luck turns around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 15 hours. 15 hours, wow, okay. That's quite the game. <laughs> Uh, so then you've got some nice scenes here as well. I like look maybe like a courtroom scene. I like that. Uh, so here's like I talked about you know airships when we showed the giant actual airship. Here's an example of a more brick built one, a little more realistic, not so crazy. <laughs> uh, and then some cooler. I like like almost Tron looking builds there with those colors, I like that. Uh, so oh. <laughs> this is. Uh I love the I love the gold work on there with the binacle the binacle pieces are Hero Factory. Moving here, we have one of these uh, mosaics that's kind of a you have to take a double like take. A lenticular sort of. Yeah. So is it rabbit season or duck season? Let us know down in the comments. That's <laughs> that's the question. That's the sixty four thousand dollar question. There you go. <laughs> and then you've got the Logan movie poster here. So one of the I think many people consider one of the best superhero movies ever made, uh, and you know iconic poster there. Bob's Burgers, and then a speeder chase here, some stuff blowing up. I like the explosion techniques there. Nice chest set. Some more cars. And then the trees of the seasons here next to that. So I have a feeling all these mosaics with the studs are really awesome. And this one, especially by Brandon, through the cross, interests me. I'm curious if we can... So the instructions are sometimes you need to look through a different lens to find charity. So I'm wondering if we take this... Oh, we see yeah. an interesting little... Uh, got a cross there, and I can't read what the message says. Um, Zoom in a bit there, yeah. The way, the way to life... It's through the cross, I think. I think that's Maybe what it's, it's, yeah, yeah, okay. Like it's through the camera. It's hard to read there, but I think that there, you're right? yeah. <laughs> awesome. good job. Yeah, getting that held up. So uh, that's you know again, a unique take on mosaics. There's just so many different things you can do with that. It's great. Uh, so you've got what appears to be a recreational protection plan, <laughs> also by I believe the same builder. <laughs> so this is this is a oh. great build here. Oh, it looks like Kevin Hinkle's uh, fishing day did not go oh, too yeah. well. Is that Kevin there? I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Oh dear. Hmm. We'll have to rescue his sig fig. <laughs> ninja turtle mech here. Uh, so you've got all the ninja turtles into like one big mech. Uh, love that. So all you ninja turtle fans out there should enjoy that. Uh, th this and the next several builds here are all by Alan T. Hickman, a uh, great builder here at Brickworld. Uh, this is Teen Titans. And then next to that is like the Funko Pop for it, <laughs> for the, the, if you're familiar with the book or the movie. <laughs> so. <laughs> yep, Stephen King knows how to scare people. <laughs> so uh, maybe, not, maybe not the most popular Funko Pop that people would want to buy. <laughs> and then there's even a Seasons Aquarium, and so it's like different seasons there with the fish on different levels of the glass and it that's really cool uh, the way he did the tree and then uh, different animals you know also notice the subtle detailing with the uh, half sphere piece for the bubbles mm -hmm. as you the air bubbles as you go up that's ingenious placement very nice and then everyone's favorite Marvel villain Thanos here uh, looking very mean with uh, the golden gauntlet there <laughs> And it looks like there's some lights incorporated in this build here that kind of make it, when the lights are on, I'm sure, makes it look even cooler. And then, let me out. Very uh, scary looking eye, eye build there. <laughs> and a s'mores build, so more playful here. <laughs> so, uh, Alan Hickman, his stuff kind of runs the gauntlet across a lot of different stuff. Even got Star Wars characters there involved. <laughs> yep, Ray and Luke look to be enjoying themselves. <laughs> 
Exactly, yeah. Uh, and then we'll end this section here with uh, Voltron. And uh, who are you here? I'd like maybe an Alice in Wonderland uh, type of build. Now we're back here for day two and part two of our show floor tour here at Brick World. Sadly, Matt could not join us for part two, but John is back with me uh, providing professional commentary as always, always keeping it at a very professional level, right? Yes, totally devoid of puns and anything of that sort. Yes. <laughs> No, so. that would not be good. But yeah, we're going to start here with uh, pen lug, which is kind of, I feel like, the kind of high point of train layouts. They're always kind of the, the train layout that people look to as, as the best at a lot of these shows. It's always phenomenal to see the work that they have done with this. It's always it's kind of an ever-expanding layout. And I just admire all the angles at which all the bricks are set, especially for this rail house here. Just the angles that the walls have been placed. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. I believe that's Kill Leapart, who is uh, one of the legendary train builders as well, did that whole building. So he's had that at a few shows now. And then here you see, like, I don't even know, 10 tracks wide or something that you can run trains on here. Uh, and they display a whole bunch of them. And then a few of them run around the track as well. Each featuring very detailed boxcars, coal hoppers, passenger cars, you name it, they've built it basically. All in very uh, interesting designs, colors, and great use of pieces, especially mm -hmm. on the trucks and locomotives themselves. Shout out to Brick Model Railroader. Uh, there's do some great train kits and things over there so check them out if you're wanting to get into Lego trains. It's really awesome stuff. And then you come down here they have this nice little jet out here with some more trains. Uh, I always like this like colorful trash yard, the like scrap yard but with colorful pieces or something. Yeah the ABS recycle yard, no brick <laughs> left behind. There you go. And then this uh, Bionicle building, which you don't see a lot of that type of building there. Uh, Danny Pecora, you know, shouts out to Danny there for that interesting looking building. And some more nice trains, you got some apple trees. Really nice Whole. cars, really nice cars too on the surrounding roads there. I think Friends Train here maybe, I like it. Or you've got even like Frozen characters. Oh, it's like all Disney yeah. princesses. You have Ola vacationing <laughs> on this car here. Hopefully he won't melt. <laughs> That's right. I'm sure there's no chance of that. <laughs> then here's a bridge. Actually, I think it, it's two sections high because they actually took a section out to walk in and out. Uh, but cool, cool bridge over the water there. Maybe some sunflowers. Oh, hi, guys. And then, hi. hi. Some nice trees and forest area around this part. Oh, and then we've even got a cool little tank hidden in here. I like that. Uh, and then I think that brings us around back, pretty much back to where we started, though. Here's uh, Edward Chang. Is this beautiful looking? This is just a wonderful looking train here, nominated for best train, Canadian Pacific Jubilee. So, uh, yeah, just very nice. Really nice tiling on that train, I noticed, with the, the smoothness. It makes it look very, uh, very sleek and well finished. Mm -hmm. Which I think is, is a hallmark of good train building. You look at a lot of these and it's that like sleek, uh, you know, finished look. If there's a lot of studs exposed, they, I think most train builders try to avoid that. Definitely so, yeah. It's something to keep in, something definitely keep in mind when you're building trains. So now we're on the next big section here, and I don't think this is any one particular lug that I'm aware of, but just a lot of nice uh, city and some general layouts here. Oh, I like this. So I hadn't seen this until just now. Fort Legorado, my favorite set of all time. Uh, the best set Lego has ever made. Some people don't think so, but those people are wrong. And so I think this is a wonderful take on this. I like how they went like two or three stories high and even included some of the other like Western Toy Story characters there. That's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of modulars. I'm an even bigger fan of seeing stuff that you never think of built as a modular as a modular. I never had thought of Fort Legorado as something like this mm -hmm. and it turned out wonderful. And then there's Stark Tower, so you get the Avengers uh, going up there in the background. That's actually some, some pretty cool building techniques there with like the rounded and angled pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like uh, maybe some hinge bricks there to get that, uh, to achieve that effect. Big block building there. I like that with the, the light blue and white kind of canopies. Big pyramid. I like this, like an Aztec pyramid. It looks like maybe they're sacrificing a tourist on top there or something. <laughs> Hopefully that ends well for him. But all those skulls back there are looking pretty scary. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Some more town layouts here. I like the taco truck there. That's pretty cool. The lettering that's, that's on that is really cool. You see the fender there for mm -hmm. the C. That is a very ingenious part usage. And the, uh, the circular plate for the O, good work, nice. And then a dairy farm. 
And like a double double layer city here, so you can see it slopes up. Uh, pretty pretty intense slope there to get up to the second part of the city. I hope that ambulance is able to make it up the slope well enough. I, th I think it'll be able to make it. I love city layouts like this where it's multi-level. You're mm -hmm. able to fit in a lot more detail, and buildings aren't lost behind mm -hmm. each other as they sometimes are with layouts like this. And it really adds uh, a lot of life to it, so you feel like you know you're getting this like textured, you know, different level look at another, the city. Yeah, another dimension to the mock for sure. Mm -hmm. Here's very large buildings. I like the still in construction kind of look. That's always a cool look for these big skyscrapers. So you get massive cranes along with massive skyscrapers. Yeah, you get all sorts of little details on this from everything from the cranes to the window wiper to guys fixing the building up there, the main supports. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice Lego store. So some of this might be, there's a WIST log sign. So the Wisconsin Lego users group might be some of, some of this around here. And then another giant train yard here with a whole bunch of trains, construction vehicles. I really like this building here that they uh, have achieved kind of a latticed effect on, on the side by building plates sideways. Mm -hmm. Works really well. That's a good technique indeed. Yeah. Here's the train station he coming up and then there you start their system of roads. I love the dark red brick building there. Uh, very classic look for the bricks. And then down here, I think we've got more modern, like monorail. Uh, so you've got maybe like an airport here, and then you take the monorail into the city and all sorts of action coming in here. There appears to be like a fleet of helicopters there, which is pretty cool. <laughs> also, look at the text screen on this lighthouse. Yeah, inverted, inverted, uh, like tile plates almost to get that effect, uh, whatever the, they're kind of, I call them like the, the road sign piece sort of, but it looks like they've even done the dock and the door in that same fashion. Mm -hmm. That really works out well. It makes it look very nicely textured. Even the top there as well. Every, everything's just flipped, flipped the other way out. <laughs> There's turning everything on its head there. And then this wonderful fleet of, uh, green helicopters. Mm -hmm. They've even included the different depths of the of the water there, and almost kind of the effect of the of the water being blown down from the from the uh, the blades' turbulence. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice effect. So then we'll end this section with some of this cool like sketching and art stuff here, all made out of Lego. So uh, you know a lot of people like to talk about Lego as art. Well, this is kind of like art made with Lego. I had to take a double take at the power strip there because I didn't know if it was Lego or not. Another one of those great examples of you see something you're not sure it's Lego, it turns out to be, and it just makes it that much more awesome. Mm -hmm. And. We'll move down then to the next section here. Uh, there's some really impressive stuff down here. I know a lot of this is definitely with lug, so I think you see a lot of their, their stuff in this part of the show area. Uh, so we'll start with this incredible build on the corner here, which I had a chance to talk to the builder for a while earlier. This is uh, the frozen castle with the giant, beautiful mountain in the background and just very eye-catching when you walk around here and you can spot you know, Anna and Elsa on the balcony there. Uh, beautiful architecture on the castle. I always enjoy talking to Ben and, and with his with his awesome creations that he brings to these conventions. He was telling me a lot about the building process of it and how he sorts it out afterwards and kind of separates it out into chunks because it's no easy undertaking, you know, building one of these things every year as he does for conventions like this. So it, there's there's details just everywhere, and I really like the dark green roofing. A nice touch. Yeah, and then the mountain is great as well. And you, when you look behind there, you can see, uh, you know, I think we'll have a more in-depth video where we show behind there. Uh, and see kind of how that structure is kept up and everything. So it's very nice. And here's a big layout, uh, kind of naval ships, uh, some military, some just fishing, and then kind of a really nice fort here and uh, a town on the, the rocks and the cliffs. Pirates is one of my favorite themes. I love buildings that are turned on their sides on the corners like this to create kind of a cobblestone street effect. Mm -hmm. And I'm just admiring now the rigging that's on these ships because it is just like you would see on an actual boat or an actual uh, 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 vessel like this, like the Majestic here and also the Pearl, which was nominated for best sea vessel with that rigging. That's intense. Yeah, this is uh, some beautiful ships here. I love this one, the Komodo uh, Dragon here is just amazing. So kind of that more Asian look to it. Uh, almost a Japanese sort of look. I think that's that's really nice. And then the Korean turtle ship behind there. So maybe those two are fighting each other. <laughs> and then uh, another seasons themed build. Uh, so this is, looks like, oh, it looks like the builders maybe been changing this. So like uh, d different days of the show has had different seasons and now we're on winter uh, today. 
So each day you can stop by and see what's changed. That's a fun and clever idea to be able to see something like that. I'm guessing that they have it in separate modules and then use Technic pins to put it together. Mm -hmm. do, do you think maybe? I don't know. I would hope so, just for the builder's sake, so they aren't like <laughs> switching out like massive amounts of pieces. And be make sure we'll hit this stuff on the side here real quick as well, so we don't skip this, because this is an awesome classic space layout. It even has the classic Legoland uh, logo built out of bricks there, along with all of these sets. And if some of these appear to be, uh, you know, slightly uh, built up sets like this massive one here and stuff. So they've made these even cooler. There's a lot of amazing vintage stuff here. And uh, Classic Space, the original, is a theme I find myself constantly growing appreciation for each time I see it. And especially with the Legoland uh, display there, the, uh, the text built, and all this action going on, I, I think I'm going to start building some space stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, this is crazy. And then there's a display down here. Uh, so there's just some smaller vignettes and scenes here. I like these little, the seasons of Minnesota. I like how th three of them are all winter. <laughs> That's awesome. This stuff is built uh, on the right here by my friend Noah. Um, and uh, he's got some uh, kind of modern conflict uh, mm -hmm. slash like uh, interesting uh, mechs and spacecraft or landcraft terrestrial. And then he got an interesting mobile emergency hospital built by Ted with the, uh, uh, the jets as for the wheels. Yeah. That's some great work there, some kind of futuristic battle almost. So then we'll come back over to this section and continue over here with the uh, Wisconsin Lug stuff. And starting here with the Star Wars build, uh, Star Wars builds are, as I've mentioned previously, kind of mixed in everywhere. Uh, this is the Imperial Base Assault, and so you can see these guys with jetpacks coming in here to the base and uh, some troops coming out to meet them. Uh, big battle about to go down. My favorite part of this build is the entrance gate that is the, the green lasers. It's really eye-catching and it has a very cool effect mm -hmm. um, on camera and in real life. And then I think the next section is a big uh, collab uh, and it's I think the Isles of Historica. So it's like Guilds of Historica all related to that. And so you've got a whole bunch of islands here, all sorts of different ships and then a lot of different types of architecture depending on which island you're on. Uh, so there's sort of more like Middle Eastern type of architecture. Uh, and then over here, you've got more of the medieval stuff. Yeah, I love, I just love stuff like this. This is, <laughs> I could stare at this for hours. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, especially you look at like these market type builds here, which have so much detail packed in with all the small little Lego food pieces and everything and the money pieces and then all the different types of buildings and shapes there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Then over here as well with the kind of a medieval uh, market village, you might say, as well. I like this. And then here's a look at the the offset castle on the back. There is kind of crazy. It appears to be supported in a very different way back there. It's precarious, but they've done a good job of uh, supporting it with some wooden. I guess the wood is supporting the stone there. So very, very strong wood, very, very thick oak, I guess. Um, and some different little built up hills like there with the barn. And this is a nice little castle layout. And here is one of a uh, number of black light tents that you see at the show. And so this is just a whole bunch of builds that under black light have all these cool added effects because of the pieces that the builder uses here. Uh, so this is uh, Barbara, I think is the name of this builder that, that did all of all of these. And you can see that their desert piece is nominated for best artwork, which is just really neat. It's kind of that forced perspective of the sun back there. Definitely, it looks amazing. And then all the trans green stuff is also very, very neat as well. It glows really nicely. And then down here we've got a uh, Joker minifig build and a big fig. Got some smaller vignettes and things. Here's, a, here's another tiny like Fort Lake Arado build. <laughs> Main hey. Tower of uh, Orthanac, I think, yes. from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, something I have seen. Yes, <laughs> you go. You recognize that one? Rings a bell, you might say. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Here's Bob's Burgers. Uh, so I like the detail on this. I've seen one or two other uh, Bob's Burgers over the years, but uh, this one looks like it's very detailed and even has an interior and stuff. So it's neat. Uh, here's a Minecraft layout. So Minecraft, you know, always a massive fan base overlap between Minecraft and Lego. So you always see some Minecraft stuff at Lego shows. Uh, so this appears to have a number of the different kind of biomes or areas from Minecraft. I've never actually played the game myself, either, but yeah. I've talked to enough bu Minecraft builders that I feel like I'm somewhat familiar with it here. <laughs> it's hard to avoid it in the Lego community. 
and then winter to summer. So this is again a seasonal uh, build. So kind of summer on the left and winter on the right, right. Like all the ice hockey and the ice fishing and stuff in the winter and all these really nice flowers uh, in the summer area. And here's, uh, oh, this is, I think, so they already have the awards draft, happens? first place draft and build. Uh, so it's kind of like some games that apparently already happened. And so that's what the awards are for here. And then just uh, a nice looking house here as well. Kind of maybe neo-Victorian style. Am I wrong about that? Or something that that seems right. I think that's close enough. Once again, another sort of black light effect going on here with this tent. Uh, nominated for best airship. Uh, this is a massive hanging airship. I love those sails. Uh, and then some of the glowing fire and stuff there. It looks like they're fighting uh, some of the other uh, dragons here yeah. uh, as they, the humans are trying to battle them off and keep them from burning their ship. You've got everything from dragons on the sails to dragons in the skies, minifigure dragons, and even dragons in the clouds down below that are kind of, you know, they're in ambush. This is a really cool build. There's just a lot of neat pieces that, and colors that don't normally, you don't normally see together in a mock. Mm -hmm. goes beautifully here. Yeah. Even... <laughs> uh, even some are those uh like jack stone type pieces the trans like green and orange trans clear light bars i feel like that was uh maybe originally came about in jack stone sets there it looks familiar from those and here's a collectible minifigure series booklet sort of thing someone appears to have made pyro the dino disco uh once again some more <laughs> dino themed fire builds here <laughs> We've got uh looks like they serve pizzas and it's like duplo men uh so at the bar there <laughs> while all of the the dinos enjoy themselves on the dance floor so i like it i'm uh, i'm guessing during world of lights tonight this will be pretty cool then next to that you've got the farm and empire picnic so this is a farm combined with uh what appears to be a whole bunch of star wars characters coming in here and enjoying their picnic <laughs> as well as these star these star wars guys here in the cars that's and the awesome. horses <laughs> that's pretty great there's a lot of fun details in this <laughs> bill i'm just noticing i'm grinning ear to ear this is great <laughs> it's a uh, mashup you don't see real often with oh, with yeah. farm and star wars <laughs> right 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 larry the lawnmower they they named the lawnmower there that's Little. nice Eyeballs okay. there, yeah. So Larry seems to have a, a grinning mouth there for the for the radiator grill, I guess. So, yeah. And then a garage here. So looks like some tools and stuff in the very back of the garage. And then keep moving down here. I like this little duck build, which looks like it maybe was uh, best mechanical nominee last year at, at this show. To me, like if as you roll it along, perhaps the wings flap, and you know me, I'm tempted to try and see if that works, but I don't want to. I don't want to break it, so I will, I will uh, refrain from doing so. That's a good idea. <laughs> Got some Homer Simpson, some Emmett's kitchen here. Well, I like that. The fridge. The fridge builds are always neat. Yeah, that's a really good part used there on the hinges. Uh, 1930 service stations. So you've got the the gas area, obviously, and then even some I think beds here. Uh, and some like apartments and stuff. That's neat. Beach party, uh, monochrome SpongeBob. <laughs> so just one color. I feel like that kind of ruins the point of building a SpongeBob, but okay. <laughs> uh, we'll see where that goes. This is a really beautiful ship. Unfortunately, I think uh, all of the stuff that moves is not on right now because a lot of those like cylinders in the middle there move and then there's all sorts of stuff that, that spins around and everything. Uh, because, it, yeah, it's, it's really neat what the builder was able to achieve with this, talking to him earlier. Yeah, there's phenomenal detailing everywhere. Um, this is one of those times where I wish I was, I was a minifigure, actually a micro figure this time, so I could see in, in up close all these amazing yeah. pieces and part usages. I want to point out the, these, like, eye piece there on the, the micro, I the tiny ships. Yeah, yeah, those that's really neat. That's a great implementation of that piece. Huh. And... Down here we've got the uh, little Mario universe and then some more uh, Minecraft here as well. And I think that takes us back to the beginning of this section. So we'll just come right over here and start, start in on this section and keep making our way down. 
So the first thing we have here is some neat pirates and kind of, kind of imperial islander stuff. And I think this plexiglass effect has been around for a number of years at Brickworld. Uh, but it basically allows you to kind of put the animals and stuff underneath and build sort of part of the island underneath to give that water effect there. I think it's really realistic, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes it look really cool. And uh, I'm sure there are a few, like, Easter eggs that you can find underneath there. If you look, if you look close enough, I'm going to try to see if I can't find some. Hmm. I do love the Islander canoes there as well. I think those those are really cool. I think Islanders is such an awesome theme. Pirate Island with treasure, little fort. Got wh whatever these guys are doing with the barrels. <laughs> it's like an obstacle course, I think, to race to see who wins, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. It could easily be. Here's a Mosaic X23. This looks like it might be something from possibly like an X-Men related movie, maybe Logan, something like that. Microscale Castle and Pirate collab. So you build kind of a, uh, you know, six-sided or eight-sided build here, and then you put it down and you can join the collab. Different size snails. I think this has made an appearance at past shows, but uh, Casey Ross is known for her snail builds, and you see a series of them here, all different types of snails. And then this next big build here I think is really cool. Uh, it's apparently based on a, a video game called Hello Neighbor, uh, but I love what they've achieved here. They have some shots from the game there, and I think they captured the well. Uh, you've got the kind of roller coaster track, uh, spinning windmill. Um, there's actually, I just noticed there were <laughs> a, a cool minifig that you might recognize on the top right there as well. <laughs> it does look vaguely familiar, yeah. Huh. I like that. So uh, then you've got all sorts of other like kind of wonky buildings all around here as well. So I like what the builder achieved. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool angles and things in here, especially with the chrome piping going up all the way for the chimneys. Mm -hmm. That's a neat touch. I like it. And then here, I think a Joker and Batman, uh, <laughs> these are records here. And then we have the little Homer box. Uh, Homer cubed, to be <laughs> yes. exact, because uh, it's raised to the power of three. And how appropriately, it is built inside of a cube. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, I could make a ton of puns with this, but I will actually not do that okay. this time. Thank you. Keep it inside the perimeter. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. Sorry, I will take a different angle. I mean, yeah, right. Yes, OK, good. Keep moving down here. And you can see one of the builders hard at work here. Steve Hassenplug uh, made frequent appearances in, in videos. <laughs> this is uh, Tom Atkinson's favorite GBC worker right here. <laughs> and also, he has been a uh, big force in the Minecraft layout here. So this is very cool. It looks like it's been grown since we last showed this at Brickworld Indy. Uh, more you know, areas added on here, more little homes and everything, and uh, more characters added in. So this appears to be a growing collaboration with Minecraft. Great haunted house. Uh, I think haunted houses lend themselves really nicely to Lego because you can add on so many little details to them. And now that Lego has come out with the you know the collectible minifigure series, there's always there's never a lack, I should say, for a proper costumes to dress up the minifigs as as they go trick or treating. Mm -hmm. Even got Santa up there on the chimney. <laughs> Another builder hard at work here. <laughs> pure Lego battery holder. Nothing in here except. Batteries, a little spring, and some conductive tape. There you go. And you got a whole power grid. This is an example of the power grid underlying our little uh, girly. Uh, I, I wanted to show that electronics can be girly, even when you connect them to Lego. It's not all about motors. Yeah, I like that. It'll look good during World of Lights then as well. Very cool. Thank you. Some fun characters built there next to that. And then this is a really cool build I like. I was talking to the builders for our video earlier today. Uh, this is Mindstorm's excavation site, and basically they have all of the old Mindstorm's kits buried in there, and it's like you can basically go through the history of Mindstorm's as you look through this build. The, uh, these robots seem to have a touch of uh, Jawa in them because they seem to have found R2-D2's head there. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to scrap it for metal. I don't know what they're going to do with poor R2. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lineage there of uh, different uh, scrappers. <laughs> And then the crystal fountain, which I think we've seen before, but is always cool. Uh, moves crystals up and down there. It's a really neat build. It's a Crash Bandicoot, which is on LEGO Ideas, actually. So if you are like this character and enjoy this build, check it out on LEGO Ideas. Uh, I think they're trying to reach the 10,000 supporters as soon as possible. And Mist Island as well. Some nice trees. 
Cubs related train. We're in Chicago, so that's very appropriate. Mountain living with the Four Seasons. And then around here are some builds by uh, Nan and Zong, who is uh, incredible, just a legend in the Lego community. He's been around for many, many years and always uh, has done some amazing builds over his time in the community. I know he's some recently hasn't had as much time to build, but uh, over the years he's done some awesome uh, collabs with different builders and his own work here. So you can see the sunset at uh, Mission San Miguel here. It's almost like a futuristic take on a mission, almost with like the, the purple base there. Yeah, definitely. I, I've always been an admirer of his work. Um, I actually just got a chance to talk to him a day or two ago. Really um, interesting guy. And also the two favorite mocks here of, of, of his that are, are probably have to be the bubble boat and the uh, desert monolith. I love how the tiles and the bricks are achieving that really awesome kind of uh, enigma looking whatever <laughs> thing it is in the middle of the desert. It looks awesome. Yeah, it's incredible though. You look at those techniques there and that's just uh, some, some truly next level building there and that, and that bubble boat that you mentioned as well is very neat. So yeah, if you watch, anyone who watches our 24 hour live streams will be familiar with Nan and Creations for Charity who uh, he founded and uh, we've done all the 24 hour live streams for. So done all that stuff over a number of years with Nan and great guy. And then here's a large World War II tank uh, factory, which is actually based on a real uh, tank factory that was in uh, Michigan during World, uh, World War II. So it's, it's really awesome to, to look inside and see all the different kind of stages of tank building and like the tool shop there and all the, the little parts they're making and even the train out here to ship them out to the boats that will take them across to the, the European theater or wherever they're headed to. So I think that's uh, a fun build to explore. Some more smaller Star Wars builds here. Uh, Geonosis, you got Battle of Naboo, and a Scarif build here. I like how they packed so many minifigs coming out of the bunker there. That's <laughs> Those guys don't seem to stand a lot of chance. Nice little house there. I think we've got a fire truck that appears to be based on a real actual fire, tr fire truck there, based, based on the photo. And then here's some kind of crazy space battle, I think. Lots of ships packed in a small area. Little friends layout down here. All the different friends characters enjoying themselves. I like this. Four Seasons Make a Year. It looks like it's based on the book here, uh, right next to it, almost like a pop-up book effect. Again, going hand-in-hand -hand with the Brick World theme this year, the Seasons. And yeah, I love how they've mod modeled it after an actual open book. That's that's awesome. And a little bit of a post-apocalyptic type oh. build here. Yeah, Beneath Palms and Rust. I know I know Justin, very good friend of mine. I've actually not gotten a chance to see this mock, so this is really cool <laughs> seeing it for the first time. And he's, I like how he's done kind of these, these dilapidated pillars of whatever used to be here, maybe some building or structure like that. Lots of foliage and great detailing throughout. Good job, Justin. I love the guy who apparently decided it was a good idea to take like the, the Aztec chief headdress there Whoops. as like his, his protection <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the coming what, whatever's happening. You do what you gotta do, man. <laughs> That's pretty great. Some maze type structures and cubes and things. Do we have some cool cars that caught your eye? We do have some cool cars that have collected my eye. I think all of these are built by Ronald, and I gotta say, the Aventador is is one of my it's one of my favorite sports cars of all time. It just has a really stealthy, aggressive it look, does. and oh man, captured wonderfully. <laughs> Good use for the headlights of the uh, T pneumatic piece there. That's a great detail. And even the like katanas there as well for the windshield wipers. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and they even look like I think his also his artwork here as well, which is pretty very nice artwork as well. Yeah, definitely. Very, very nice concept art. Move around here, and got like an Arkham Asylum scene there next to a bunch of, I think these are sort of like modded, painted, uh, you know, big construction type figures, but turned into uh, some like Marvel and DC uh, superheroes, it looks like. So that's an interesting way to, to modify those. Here's a uh, Rent and Link from Good Mythical Morning. Uh, famous YouTube channel there. I like that. Someone built their studio. They even have the wheel of mythicality, I believe, there. Uh, so great YouTube channel there. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> Here's uh, Kevin Hinkle uh, in the Upside Down. Uh, so, you know, Stranger Things builds a number of them around here this year. Uh, and this is Kevin Hinkle being featured in one. <laughs> yeah. 
I like all the details throughout. I'm curious how they, maybe the they're, the plates are just stacked together, or maybe they're attached somehow. Either way, it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And the uh, YouTube play lo button there as well, I like that. Subscribe, please. That's right. Subscribe. <laughs> sub for sub. <laughs> then it's got a little uh, play area here. You got some roller coasters, some rides, amusement park type of thing. Here's a, a great little, uh, not not little build, but a great build here, a Japanese village. So I uh, just came in from Japan uh, show recently, and I think this is uh, definitely captures a lot of the architecture, particularly like the gateways and stuff there. I think it's very nice. And then all of the work that went into the, the subtle uh, like grass and you know, raising and lowering the terrain. Yeah, it seems like a fairly peaceful scene, although Garmadon is on the horizon there, so hopefully it doesn't cause too much trouble. Batman doesn't seem too concerned, though, as he's been uh, kind of swimming and taking it easy. Swimming with the dolphins there. He's not concerned. And then another Asian-themed build with the Lunar New Year Parade. A little like that with the drummers and everything. Got everybody watching the parade. Then here's a Missouri History Museum. So this is based uh, apparently on the real building. They've got uh, photos there. That's neat. And it looks like some similar real life based uh, buildings as well. Particularly like the, the kind of white mix in with the dark red bricks there. Yeah, it's a nice effect. Good touch. And it actually definitely uh, replicates the uh, real Bissell Street water tower there as shown on the picture. And I think that finishes out this section then. We're back here at these uh, pirate layouts. So we'll keep going down this half the room and Next to us is the GBC, which right now isn't really running, so there's not a lot to see, but we definitely uh, will have a more in-depth video. We recorded one earlier today uh, showing the, how the whole GBC works and some of the awesome modules there. So look for that on the channel uh, when it actually is all running and you can check it all out. So we'll move right on then to this section. And this is a, an incredible layout here, uh, something that I absolutely love. Uh, this is over 4,000 Napoleonic era minifigs. And Though this, this layout doesn't depict one certain battle, uh, the, the builder did take time to make historically accurate you know, uniforms for each type of soldier that would have been around in the Napoleonic era with the French soldiers and the Dutch and the Prussians and the Russians and just everybody that was involved in those battles, uh, even the Belgians and everything. So I love all of these and just finding all the little details in here is really cool. I would not have the patience to set up all of these <laughs> because I am clumsy when it comes to Lego and it would be just a giant domino effect. So very good, uh, very good work to Michael here for mm -hmm. job well done. I believe he said he recruited a couple of uh, kids to help him out, set them all up because it was going to take a very long time and he didn't want to have to go through all of that. But one thing I particularly notice here is the tires for the hats here. So kind of the the wool hats uh, that you see on a lot of the, the French soldiers, uh, you, the tire effects I think is a pretty cool way of achieving that. The troops do seem to have maybe some intergalactic help as there seems to be an alien over there in the tree. I'm seeing some other Easter eggs like Olav here and yeah, some Chima crocodiles over there too. So mm -hmm. even got a daredevil being shot out of cannon. <laughs> there you go. Some fun <laughs> details there. And then Dream House, uh, Dystopia City Attack. So this is kind of cool. It's like an all out battle uh, in sort of a wasteland looking area doesn't look too fun some more cars I like this Batmobile the 1989 Batmobile is really cool I think that's a nice design nominated for best land vehicles is Dodge Challenger which is yeah you look under, under the hood there and you, even more details that Corvette Stingray is also a cool design. I like the, the rounded shapes he's able to achieve with the bricks there. Yeah, it's really nice, especially using the roof for part of the trunk there. That's a great part usage. Mm -hmm. Then some more mech type builds. Uh, here is Benny's neoclassic space hangar. So he's building different spaceships and stuff in there. <laughs> and some moon base. I love the, the force perspective there with the classic space logo. A mosaic in the background that's really nice uh, this is minicon so minicon has been a, a staple kind of on and off of shows they're uh, depending on the size and how much time builders have they'll build like a miniature version of the actual show happening around around us here and so uh, it's you know mini land characters of different people at the show and then they've got mini land versions of this the builds so it's always interesting to see what's sprinkled in here 
here I think is so like a giant spaceship that's here at the show. I think that's what that's depicting there. Oh, here's an actual potted plant that appears to be like real dirt and stuff. So, getting getting the actual uh, potted plant in there. They're very well rooted in creativity. They're truly blossoming. Sorry. Very true. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's a nice World War II build here. It looks like we've got a nice winter landscape. Some Americans and Germans fighting. Uh, little, uh, min very minimalist with the trees, which is interesting. So you you don't normally see them like that. I think it's uh you know takes takes the focus more on the other stuff in the build and away from the trees. Yeah, it really puts a lot of emphasis on the vehicles and the artillery there, which is very important, especially in a scene like this. And a beautiful coaster here. So this is, uh, is this the official Lego coaster kit or a modified one? It looks like most of the original, maybe with some slightly modified yeah. parts. So uh, very impressive uh, uh, nonetheless. And I just love all the the red track going around. Yeah. I haven't had, have you had a chance to build with or play with the official coaster kit? Not yet, but we could do, well, no, better not touch it or display. <laughs> anyway. Not yeah, yet, but there's no better time than the present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think that finishes out this square here. Uh, we'll go down here and hit this stuff then. See what else we have uh, on display. So this is, I think the, the first, the whole front line of this area is a Duplo ball run. Uh, so it runs across the top table and then runs down here all the way till it gets to the floor. So maybe maybe you can give an example here of how this works. Let's see, it's going, it's going, it's going. Oh, I think gravity is winning here. <laughs> maybe so, or maybe I'm. <laughs> We've got Danny in here to help it out, maybe. <laughs> I haven't actually seen a cow in a while. As far as I know, it's oh, it made it down. All the way down down the rabbit hole through the tree past grandma's uh, carrot patch and I'm gonna stop improving and let you guys watch this cool display. There we go. Yes, it, it actually perfectly. worked, beautiful. And I didn't break it, so that's good, <laughs> great job. <laughs> Here's a chair, John, maybe you need a little, you know, getting tired, you just wanna take a little break here. Okay, <laughs> as you roll into a table full of builds. <laughs> That would just be me to do that, yes. <laughs> we'll try to avoid that. It's a uh, Nexo night, so you see like a tornado and stuff there. Uh, looks like stuff by Danny Picora, Andrew Boltop, a few different builders here. So I think we've gotten into the <laughs> the Bionalog section here. And so this is a lot of Bionicle type builds that you'll see around here. The mosaic in the background. And, and if we keep moving around this way, you've got some cool bionicle builds and then these lenticular mosaics that are really neat i always like these so it's different bionicle characters uh depending on which way you look at them they change appearance so i think that's pretty cool and then here is like a whole bunch of different characters and different scales so even got like the technic lego technic figure scale there i think that is these trains clear swords are pretty neat. I like how they're displayed. And a bionicle Christmas tree. A couple nice builds by Seth Peacock over here. He's Lego obsessionist on Flickr and elsewhere. Okay, Seth Peacock is the builder of these. And this uh, crazy looking monster thing here it looks very scary. I think they achieved whatever uh, cr monster effect they were going for there. Got some Bionicle uh, Millennium Falcon and Star Wars characters mm -hmm. there, and uh, yeah, very interesting builds. Jason Head there, good stuff. And then here's a collab, we featured this at a convention recently, so we have a more in-depth video on this if you want to check it out, but this is a collab uh, with a number of different builders and like big, big construction figures and cool trees and stuff. They uh, typically have Star Wars, Bionicle, and a mixture of a whole bunch of stuff going on in here so you can stop by and pick out some of the fun characters. It is gradually evolving from being the Endor Forest to the uh, Lakoro Forest from Bionicle. <laughs> we're mixing in various things slowly and getting silly with it a little bit, having fun with it. Why not? Go for it. I like it. We'll keep going down here. <laughs> Trying not to miss anything here. Uh, so this is, the, I think, the vast majority of what we have here, uh, and we can actually, let's, let's start down here so we can kind of follow this around in a logical uh, way. So we'll start down here with these, these smaller builds, 
And you've got nomination for best small building is Liechtenstein Castle there, which is just some awesome techniques and everything with the way they were used, able to use uh, just one or two pieces to achieve some cool effects. And then the pandas here. And then I particularly like this. So this is City of the Future, uh, three or four different layers, uh, kind of futuristic build there. Studs going every which way, lots of difficult connection points for sure. So uh, props to Noel for an awesome job on mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And if we keep moving down through these tables, uh, you've got then after these couple spaceships, what starts a massive collab with a Nova Lug. And these were, I, I believe you actually had a build in here, right, John? So you would probably be able to maybe explain this better than me. Yeah, so the, the, the basis behind the Isles of Aura collab are these kind of... Um, uh, medieval islands that float in the skies and you see all these amazing kind of uh, mythical lands and structures that that adorn this this section here so they have done a phenomenal job with this i i find myself uh, actually early this morning like 3 a.m i was out here i was just studying like all the vignettes or uh, sorry all the all the all the details on each of these kind of in a uh with the display style and I'm just noticing all these amazing details, these building techniques. I can learn so much from these guys. They've done a phenomenal job, seriously. Yeah. It's every, it's, every which way you look is just Lego awesomeness. It's amazing. We had Mark Erickson take us around for a, a okay. video earlier, and yeah, this is his ship right here, actually. It's nominated for best airship, and uh, he and his brother, and then a number, I think, what, were there 11 or 12 or mm -hmm. something like yeah. that, builders involved, so... Yeah. Uh, just tons of very talented builders here. Uh, you're certainly in good company with, with your builds here. <laughs> you get the leaves and everything. Uh, these are just, I love the, the little uh, mini, the minifig parts and kind of the way that the minifigs were put together I think is really cool with the weapons and the armor and everything that was chosen. They always find a way to use, and all of them always find a way to use these parts that I would never <laughs> think to use in a build and they implement them in these such ingenious ways and make great use of space in the mocks. That's something I've noticed that, uh, you know, I personally need to do more in my builds. They, they, there's not one stud wasted in these mocks and it's very evident, yeah. And then this build right here is actually from uh, our con Lego Reimagine contest that we ran. So Mark Erickson submitted the updated uh, castle build here and actually won the contest. So uh, he'll be going to, to Scarebeck in Denmark with us later this year uh, for that. So an excellent build there. And it was uh, great to have him enter. And then another nomination for uh, best individual layout. Uh, wonderful winter build, uh, incorporating the snow into those buildings is really nice. Yeah, the Streets of Daedalon is one of my favorite builds from Isaac. It's just awesome detailing everywhere and great use of the white sloping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also Winter Serenity here is nominated too. So just excellent builds all the way around. Is, is this a series of like nutcrackers? Are, yeah, and I believe, and hopefully, hey, uh, Novolog people, please don't be mad at me if I break this, but they, yeah, these do work. So uh, they have done just an awesome job of in uh, lots of different characters from pop culture and uh, kind of almost like collectible series, some of them. They're fun to look at, mm -hmm. yeah. They are. So yeah, that's some really great stuff there. We'll come around this way then and keep moving through the show here so you've got some more vendors to the side of us and take a look at the spaceship nominated for best youth creation and this build is just absolutely insanely huge um this builder's like i think a senior in high school wow. and uh first time displaying a brick at any show actually which is just crazy so he just came out swinging with this yeah it's 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 a gargantuan ship i mean it just it has details everywhere the black greebling is something that just makes it really pop and with the uh the neon blue everywhere i mean it's just a phenomenal build i really like it mm -hmm. yeah and usually, I don't think he has them on right now, but there's lights on all the interior stuff really? there, so you can actually oh, see wow. what's going on. So, okay. yeah, uh, when he has those lights turned on, it's even better because you can see all the... He's made some cool custom minifigs and stuff. He's got these extra fighters. Uh, the whole thing is just amazing. Yeah, see, see if you can... I don't know if we can see any... Yeah, oh, wow. So there's a lot of great details in there. Look at that. Okay, very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm sure we'll get some shots during World of Lights if he has those lights turned on. He mentioned that this giant round area here, which is kind of the main weapon, he had hoped to be able to get that spinning and like motorized, but couldn't quite get that part done. But I don't think we can fault him for that when he brings all of this. No, it's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> darn excellent. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't change a thing. It's great. Yeah. So that wow. his name is Jordan. Great work. Great work, Jordan. Down here, uh, Evil Stegosaurus. I think actually uh, by the same builder here, Jordan again. 
uh, and then John Williams with some work here. I like uh, this guy here with like the, the little monocle type thing almost on his eye. That's pretty cool detail. Tactical monocle, yes. yeah, something like that. <laughs> the tactical monocle. I never leave home without it. <laughs> B24 Liberator. That is a very nicely sloped, uh, no studs showing on the top of that build. <laughs> Always one of my favorite planes. I actually got a chance to go inside of one of these airplanes uh, a few years ago, and the interior is very awesome on, on the, just the, the structure. And it looks like they've been able to accomplish that too at the cockpit and then the gun bay there. So very good job, Caden, on this on this B-24. Yeah, that's awesome. And the nominated for best youth creation next to that is the Eros Castle. Uh, you can see there's even a nice little uh, llama build <laughs> thrown in on the bridge there. But I like that the angled bridge really adds a lot to this build. So it, it kind of gives that sloping effect instead of just your normal kind of level build bridge. Yeah, again with the multi-tier, and that's never something I've really seen with the castle, like a sloped bridge. It's a nice idea. Mm -hmm. And here is a beautiful ship. Uh, look, at the, look at how well-rounded this is and how, again, how smooth this ship is is really nice as well. It looks like some custom cloth sails. Yeah. It looks like a Spanish galleon, judging from it, just based on the fact that the bow sticks out further than the uh, the main part of the hole. Uh, but that may be the uh, marine fan in me coming out there. So uh, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Let me know in the uh, let them know in the comments. I should say, but um, impressive build nonetheless. Mm -hmm. The Black Arrow looks like it's based on an actual British satellite uh, carrying rocket. So that's pretty neat. Some kind of some chrome pieces almost at the bottom there. Yeah, metallic. Yeah, definitely. And Defender class boat. I like this because even though it's a small build, you really get a nice sense of movement going here with like the wake behind the boat there. I think they achieved that really well. There's, yeah, the different tones of the water to show uh, the rippling effect and then even the use of the gray flowers as the propellers. That's something I've never seen before and that, mm -hmm. that can lend itself to be a very useful piece. And then next down here we've got uh, this <laughs> build by Matthew Green, going to be a long day. Uh, looks like <laughs> there's a man uh, dodging some arrows on the, the shooting range there. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that looks terrifying. <laughs> Not a good day for that soldier. Kind of a nice city layout here. And we've even got some kind of modern art inspired buildings here. Uh, and then a nice Again, force. So a lot of seasons build. I I feel like this year more than more than most shows. Uh, there's people that kind of really built based on the theme, and you've seen a lot of these seasons based builds, which I think is pretty cool. And this is a very different uh, city layout because I think you've got like the city on the left, this monorail that runs through, and then another smaller city on the right. Um, I do like the way they did the lettering there. I think that's some cool brick built lettering. Uh, the middle section appears to be like a dark lava area that does not look fun to go through. <laughs> and then we appear to have like this city seems to be falling apart. So there's a lot going on in that scene. <laughs> and then this is a series of spaceships all uh, by Ben, who's just uh, incredible here that he, he did all of these himself. And you can see, you know, they use the same type of colors uh, throughout all of them. Uh, but they're all just just amazing that he was able to build this many. Benny from the Lego movie would indeed be impressed with these. Um, they are just phenomenal and I'm going to have to revisit this section because there's just a ton of greebling and, and clever part usage all around. There even appears, as he's showing there, to, to be a, a hangar bay mm -hmm. inside of it and uh, I just... I want to build a spaceship now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to. <laughs> and I want to point out something that uh, Sean Mayo, uh, another builder here at the show, was, was showing me. Is, and take a look at these lines here and how he achieved the, the white lines throughout the build along with these other, the lines, darker lines going the other direction. And just so many different details like that, they're incredible on there's, this. Yeah, there's a ton of symmetry that had to be kept in mind, I'm sure, when building these in order to make them all look uniform and as amazing as they do. Mm -hmm. Summer music festival here. So I like that. It looks like everybody's having a good time all the minifigs gathered around the band and then a build by Tim Liddy here here who's uh, you know always always brings some incredible stuff to Brickworld Chicago this is nominated for best large building and this is the Goblin King Fortress so very different looking castle uh, very different colors uh, I love all that but he even included kind of a throwback here to some of that original uh, older castle stuff there with that panel so even an interior on this side as well the bed and all of that, and the maps and stuff. So there's so much to see in that castle. 
Then some more of Tim's builds here. Uh, Shadow Tower, kind of along the same lines. Uh, then you've got some more beautiful busts here. And then a Scooby-Doo build that we actually featured yes. last year. Yes, yeah. And did you guys see it move? Did you see the guess, model yeah. in motion? When it was oh. actually moving, it's it's crazy. It's, it's amazing. Phenomenal. Yeah, just an engineering marvel. And I, I was I was cracking up when I saw it. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. Just an awesome build, Tim. So, yeah, if you haven't checked out that video, definitely check it out to see it in action because it's, it's very impressive. Uh, so then we have, I believe... The builder is here for this creation. If, if you don't mind sharing like a quick quick overview of kind of, of what your build is here. Okay. So this is a um, this is a Viking Fabuland temple. Um, there you go. <laughs> Does that tell, tell you about everything you need to know? So uh, real quick, for people who aren't familiar with what Fabuland is, because I think it's kind of a lesser known Lego theme. What 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 exactly was that? So it was it was it only existed in the states between 1980 and 1982. A very okay. short short amount of time. It didn't do well here, but it did really well in Europe. Um, and so it it was around uh, uh, until about 1987. After a while, they they when they started their big mail order catalog push, all of the sets that were available in Europe came back to the states. So you can get them through the mail, but they weren't on store shelves. So there's not a lot of people in the States who are familiar with them, but I was the right age and the right personality at the time to really love them and miss them when they were taken off the shelves. It was, it was a traumatic experience, right? So, <laughs> so you've got to bring it back. You've got to revisit it. Yeah, it's like it, it's, a, it's a compulsion, really. It's like when I build something, I, I only see that it's going to have uh, Fabulon characters living in it. So, uh, And I'm okay with that. So it's, kinda, it's a bit of a signature. It's a bit of a brand at this point for, for myself. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's beautiful. I love the contrast between all the angles and everything with the building and then the beautiful water and uh, kind of na natural building there. So uh, it's it's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You guys have, uh, have fun looking at everything. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> we're enjoying checking it all out. So we'll keep moving down the line here then. <clears throat> Best land vehicle here. Look at all the different tubing and everything wow. on that build. Yeah, there's a lot of complexity there. A lot of uh, maybe some pneumatic uh, hosing there. Yeah, looks like and and uh, some Lord of the Rings elements too. It's awesome. The Earth Realm next to that vehicle, and I like it. It looks like there's some lights down there with some glowing kind of green bricks under the tree, and then this like golem rock monster thing. It's dreamlike, yeah. It looks <laughs> really cool, and look at the eyes on that with the uh, the curved tiles mm -hmm. on the on the rock monster thing. Very cool. Yeah. This build looks uh, great, but it appears like it was not completely finished. So this is the Gagarin, I think. Uh, and you kind of get a glimpse at what the inside structure is like, so that's different. At least you get to see what that was like, but you can see what they were going for with like the sphere look, kind of putting together a bunch of panels to get that rounded effect. Yet another uh, incorporation of Technic with regular system brick and even monorailing parts on the back to create a phenomenal build. Great mm -hmm. job. And then a couple more beautiful planes here. So this is a Boeing KC-97G. Uh, again, no, barely any studs. A couple studs on the front there, but that's about it. Uh, you know, just beautiful slopes and very sleek looking. Mm -hmm. And then the B-24J Liberator here, and you've got kind of the crew getting their photo taken in front of the plane, which I always think that's kind of cool when the builders display them like that. Yeah, and you've got some nose art on there too, and uh, just a lot of really neat details to augment this build. Again, one of my favorite airplanes. It looks like the builder chose to display this, I think, with the base plates flipped upside down there, which is an interesting that. choice. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that makes uh, kind of a kind of inverted texture. Yeah. It works. It works. <laughs> Maybe some custom minifigs there. Uh, here's some Tron-based stuff. So I think the, tr the Tron sets have been popular since those were released. <clears throat> Smaller Star Wars build. And then much larger uh, and much uh, more impressive Star Wars build here with uh, uh, Krennic uh, from Rogue One, a Star Wars story. So he appears to be getting into his ship with his special guards there. And then all the, the texturing on the walls is really nice here too. I want to be a minifigure again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lots of details throughout. Um, good lattice work. Uh, interesting curved tiles kind of to make the, the open bay for it mm -hmm. and this is just a classic scene from Star Wars you know like the uh, obviously the Imperial landing craft there with the, <laughs> with the stormtroopers ready for action here's a uh, Disneyland monorail so this is something I think that Disneyland monorail very famous over the years with both Disney fans as well as like transportation fans which you get a lot of those in the Lego community so uh, they combine well here in these uh, Disneyland monorail builds in both uh, yellow and red there Here's the 
giant outpost on Jakku with the massive Millennium Falcon that certainly kind of steals the scene in this display. Some smaller war scenes. Here's a classic minifigs on a base plate. Always a treat to experience at a show. Minecraft City here. And then some Lego battle bots. So it looks like you've got a bunch of little bots in here that can do battle in the arena. That's pretty cool. It's the USS Spartacus space exploration vessel. And I think this builder has updated this over the years and kind of brought different versions to Brick World. And uh, I think this is the best one yet uh, as he's, you know, added all to the interior there and everything. You can see all the minifigs, cool weapons, space, uh, you know, fighter craft. Danny has done an awesome uh, job with the smock and uh, you really get a sense of like this is a very realistic spaceship in that you've got it for multi-purpose things, you know, uh, space defense and also some civilian use because they're having a nice coffee while <laughs> flying through space. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's excellent. So we'll keep going here then. So uh, did we cover the tree in the first part? I don't think we did. I don't think we did. So let's, let's go down there and cover that right now then. We don't want to miss the tree build. <clears throat> Trying to make sure we don't miss anything here oversight from part one to part two. Right, yeah. <laughs> I think we walked by this, so we'll check this out <clears throat> right now. And even if we did cover, you know, it's so awesome that it's worth covering more than once. We're, we're branching out into different things. <laughs> uh, yes, right, yeah, branching <laughs> yes. out into different things. Okay, exactly. the wrong tree, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so this was, uh, I believe, the Eurobricks collab here, and it looks like there are builders still, still adding some cool details here. So one of the builders here working on her section, do you mind sharing real quick uh, what it is you're working on here? Okay, so I'm working on the replacement world for the bee who is hiding under, trying to crawl out of the vineage of the world and into okay. his own design. So um, he is a friend, a fox, who is um, his only friend in the world, who is helping him kind of crawl himself out of this design of the vines as he kind of rummages into the in and goes into the next of the worlds. Yeah, there you go. So then, uh, real quick overview of what kind of the general idea behind the whole build is, if you can, if you can give that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's too deep to do. It. <laughs> okay. Like, what <laughs> then, then we'll keep moving on because there's too much story here <laughs> to, see, to do it all at once like that. But you can just enjoy all these incredible builds. Uh, there's so much to look at on this tree. Uh, it's pretty incredible when you look at all the, t especially the, the trans clear pieces. It's one of those builds where as you look, there are new details to be seen everywhere with lots of different scales. Uh, for instance, you have the minifigs down there and you have a large um, kind of wasp or bumblebee over there. You have the python here. It's just a really neat incorporation of all these different elements and, and different themes in Lego that all are tied together in this tree. Uh, mm -hmm. That is just very impressive. So I like it. Yeah. Excellent work to the, the builders there. So then we'll move on over here and start on this. I think you start to get into a lot of the, the main Star Wars section here, so we'll see more and more of that as we go along. This is Battle of Scarif, yeah. so. Built by my friend Aiden. Um, this is a, you know, we see a lot of Scarif mocks, but what really interested me about this mock, and I told him this, was the, was the fact that the water is actually left studded. Mm -hmm. It creates a realistic look with the, uh, with the ice cream elements there, and uh, obviously there's a lot of action going on in the, uh, in the build here. You've got the stormtroopers and the sand troopers, and somehow a sand trooper balancing in that tree. That is some serious <laughs> core strength there. That dude is ready for action. Sand trooper parkour or something right yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nice little trench scene. And Star Wars battle here, that big rounded wall. Big rounded walls like that are always neat to see with Lego because obviously it's not the, the easiest shape to achieve and that's not typically what Lego is used for, but I like to see that there. And then here is the Black Panther uh, ritual combat scene. So Black Panther, a very fa famous, uh, you know, one of the top Marvel movies, I think, for many people. Uh, they've also thrown in some nice uh, characters, like is that Squidward there, possibly, yes, and yeah. Yoda in the top yes. corner. So, you know, uh, nice Easter eggs there as well. And then moving on down here. And you've got the force tree on Octo. So this, I believe, is where uh, this is Luke's home. Uh, he's got, you can see Luke and Yoda there in the middle there. It's almost camouflaged against the green. Uh, and this is the, the tree where I think he had all the, the books in the movie, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't know a lot about Star Wars. 
Yes, so, uh, <laughs> there, something happens to the tree, but you have to watch the film to see it. Not going to spoil right. it. That's right. We don't want to make anyone upset here. No. <laughs> so then you've got some more smaller Star Wars scenes, Battle of Crate here. Uh, the crate builds are fun to look at just because of how, like, the the contrast between the white and the red. So all those crate scenes really catch your eye and are, are fun to check out. And then Caroline's Pink Palace Apartments, nominated for Best Large Building. Skele go around. <laughs> so it's all skeleton animals there. Those animals, I think that they were a little neglected there or something. Maybe a slightly malnutrition, but uh, yeah. <laughs> And then I like whatever is happening there with kind of the floating scene and some kind of creature. I think that's a very interesting build. Yeah, an unusual color palette, but it works for this build that is by, who is that, Alec? Alec, yes. yes. And then Portillo's back here. So this is kind of a famous Ooh. Uh, Chicago restaurant Ooh, yes. that I know a lot of people are familiar with. And so it appears the builder uh, built kind of the mobile uh, Portillo's uh, trailer there. Yeah, good food, good food. <laughs> Some more fun Bionicle creations. And then this uh, wonderful uh, layout here. This is nominated for Best Individual Layout. I love this. This is uh, the outskirts of San Lo. Uh, beautiful uh, kind of, you got the Americans on the, the right side here and the Germans coming in on the left. Uh, all of the ruins in here are just wonderful to see all those little details as well. And so this was done by a builder, I believe the same builder last year who did the Itter Castle World War II battle. And so he's still got the castle, but in slightly different setup. This is kind of it as a medieval castle here on the right. And so if you saw that build last year, uh, then you might remember uh, some of those details there. But I love what the builder has done again this year with his layout. Definitely. Yeah. I've, I've long admired Andrew's building techniques with a lot of it. Just not only the impressive uh, scale, but also the impressive detail that he manages to incorporate in his mocks. And then a big Ice Planet Europa research station. And so Ice Planet is kind of one of those older, like, sort of space themes that uh, LEGO released. And some, some builders are still big fans and like to do these, these amazing layouts like this with the, the big towers there, those giant orange panel yeah, pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The classic color scheme. And I, I always love uh, seeing these Ice Planet mocks. They're just fun to, fun to look at. Mm -hmm. And then around the corner, uh, we've got a little Fortnite action here. So, you know, Fortnite is massive right now. Well, we're recording this video at least. We'll see in the future where it goes, but it's crazy popular right now. And so you've got, this is called Seasons of Fortnite. It's got all the characters dropping in to... to where are we dropping, boys? Yeah. <laughs> to the game here. Uh, then you even got a little screen showing, uh, you know, play uh, footage from the <laughs> game. And then all sorts of characters, different weapons and everything. So. Oh man, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let them know down in the comments. Is it Fortnite or PUBG? You're gonna probably get like twenty thousand comments just for that. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I played a little bit of Fortnite, but it's it's a fun game. It's really fun. There you go. <laughs> Deadpool taco truck. That's pretty great. He's got like a sombrero on in there. If you can see. <laughs> very Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, that's a very Deadpool thing to do. Yes. A nice little Ghostbusters vignette. Uh, U.S. invasion of Panama, so not a, a typical, uh, you know, invasion or battle that you see depicted with Lego. There's Star Wars occupation of Mimban. And then here's some classic uh, Lego older box sets. Very, very old stuff. Uh, that's when it was a, a qu product of Samsonite Corporation there. It's cool to see the old vintage sets. And then down here we've got a nice collection of different uh, Star Wars related builds. Yeah, this is this is a, a very awesome display here. The builder actually uh, just recently passed away. Couldn't be here with us at Brickworld. So um, looks like his family's done a really awesome tribute to his love of Lego, some of his mocks, some of the sets that he had here. Um, just some really awesome stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. This is Bobby's display here. So uh, yeah. You can even see some of the, the trophies there as well. It's cool stuff. And then next down to that, big, uh, really big Star Wars layout, which is very impressive. I love the, the trees on this. I've seen it on a couple different displays so far, but uh, this is a good time to mention them. Uh, it's got all the like clip pieces that are sticking out to make the tree branches. I think that's neat. And then also the rock work here for the, the cliff face. You can sort of see a little bit inside of how he used Duplo and everything, the builder, uh, to support all that. Uh, but some of these big Star Wars battles are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. and same here with the... 
very textury studs out. Uh, I think Builder did that on purpose. He didn't want the, the smooth look here. <laughs> it's it's and it, you know it works. It really augments the detail on this mock. You've got a lot of stuff going on, including the little barricades there that the troopers are hiding behind. Mm -hmm. And I think that finishes out this section for us with some smaller Star Wars stuff. So we'll go down here and, and capture some of this. Actually, it looks like there might be an event just getting out. Yeah. So why don't we'll go this way first, okay. just All to right. avoid the crowds, <laughs> try not to. Get, have too many people uh, blocking the builds here. So let's walk around this way and that will hit the Rebel Lug layout. So Rebel Lug is uh, the Star Wars lug that comes here with a crazy amount of Star Wars builds. I think this build up front here is actually their collaboration. Yeah, this is our, uh, our Star Wars that we managed to uh, uh, throw together and it has some really awesome uh, animals in it, different exhibits from all around the Star Wars universe, each little section uh, featuring, you know, different aspects of the planet and in one giant awesome collaboration that is the uh, the Star Wars Zoo. And were you, did you have a section of that, John? Or? I did actually, yeah. Okay. Um, it's, uh, you can focus mostly on the Bantha. That's probably the my, my favorite part of the build there in the back and the, just building a little Lego Bantha. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a difficult build, but fun nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a fun little layout there with that kind of like walking through the Star Wars little areas. So, yeah. and another Fortnite weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Lee for an awesome uh, Fortnite, the Scar. I, I just, I love the details that he's done on that. And it includes some working parts too. So it's extra, extra mm -hmm. awesome. And then Star Wars, you got a couple fighters here. Uh, some cool or vignettes and then mixed in with it's not just Star Wars so here's a nice little uh, Vietnam vignette yeah so these are done by Wyatt he's done some really awesome uh, World War two with the uh, BF 109 there and then a Panther tank things like that um, over here we've got Matt who or Matt who was recently on the uh, on this video earlier he's done some yeah. Hailfire droids and uh, other Star Wars uh, walkers and things of that sort over here and then, yeah, more walkers and everything. So also awesome to see his work here as well. Uh, then we've got a couple more mod, you know, World War II era, like Lugers there. Right. Uh, yeah, these are also done by Lee, who uh, built the scar over there. Uh, got some mini mocks here spread throughout, different things of that sort. Um, all stuff through Star Wars universe. And then Jack built this really awesome Battle of Alderaan and Utapau, um, which is just kind of this, this really awesome uh, display here with all the rock work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking with Jack earlier about this build. It's awesome to see the different levels and everything that he achieved there. Definitely, so I definitely. like that. Yeah. His Mustafar as well is very, very impressive. And then a bigger Endor build. Endor, obviously, one of the most popular kind of scenes depicted with Lego over the years. Uh, you get always get some big, impressive trees. Uh, you got like the satellite sort of thing going on there. So uh, all you know, transportation and everything. So always cool to see that depicted. Absolutely, yeah. And then a big battle scene here. I like this. Uh, something that the, the builders said that they achieved with this, and I was talking to him earlier, was uh, they went for more like like World War One, World War Two era scenery and like ge geography. So you see like trenches and like almost a Stalingrad type feel with the city over here. And yet it's a Star Wars layout. So it feels a little more realistic than a lot of Star Wars layouts does. So I think it's an interesting effect that they achieved there. Yeah, it's something you don't typically see with Star Wars, kind of the, the actual like the nitty gritty to the battle, what it, what it consists of. But yeah, impressive. This is Prince of Peace, a large uh, Jesus mosaic. Uh, one of the Star Wars builders told me earlier today that some kid walked up and wanted to know if that was Obi Wan Kenobi in the mosaic there. Oh, uh, <laughs> I do. Uh, yeah, I do sort of see a semblance there. Yeah. <laughs> it, since it is surrounded by Star Wars builds, it's understandable. It makes, yeah, yeah, that is yes. It's a nice like bunker, sort of a hoth type scene. Got some runway lights yeah. on there. I actually had not noticed that before. Uh, so that's a very impressive build there. And it's more Star Wars layouts here, but lots of figs on this battle. Yeah, seems to have been done by Jay Doctor, also known as John, um, who uh, has built this uh, interesting mm -hmm. mock here. Battle of Kashyyyk there. And if we move around this way, uh, we'll hit these builds and then we'll actually come, let's, we can do the rest of these back here so that we, we make sure we don't miss any of that. So I like the like sort of tentacle type stuff. I'm not sure exactly what that's supposed to depict um, here. I think this I am going to get, I'm going to get slaughtered in the comments if I get this wrong. I think, think everyone that this is Umbara. Um, if I know my Star Wars planets well okay. enough and I, and I should being in Rebelug, but um, I hope that I'm right about that. 
Uh, nonetheless, it is a yeah. It's a, it's a planet from Star Wars Clone Universe. Yes, uh, these guys over here appear to have just met an untimely. Uh, oh my! Oh my <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they seem to have lost their heads over the situation. You That's might. very true. It's not going well for them. <laughs> And then some custom World War II American and German uh, vehicles and artillery. Very impressive stuff here. We've got some uh, two different spaceships from my from my friend Elliot, who uh, has uh, been really into spaceships recently and just kind of making his own little uh, uh, smuggling freighter here and another uh, small uh, uh, stealth class fighter over there. Mm -hmm. So now we'll come back here and hit some of these builds in the back before we keep going up. So this is kind of its own uh, individual display space here. Uh, you've got a castle uh, castle with you've got like a wizard appears here going to the to the tower but then you've also got cannons and like imperial over there so mostly imperial stuff it looks like in this layout yeah there's a lot of neat details throughout um, it looks like Zach has included a lot of different little seek and find items in here so I may have to take some time this evening and try to find all the neat details he's hidden throughout uh, and then across the aisle from that is a build that I think we featured, uh, I believe, at Brick for Alabama this year. So we have a much more in-depth video of this. But this is the Henley Street Bridge uh, built by the T Tennessee Valley Lego Club. And I'm going to try to remember what city this is from. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember it. I don't think the sign says here. What, some, I, some city in Tennessee, I should know it. But uh, it is a very impressive build uh, nonetheless. And... It's nominated, actually, Best Large Building, as well as the train down here is nominated for Best Train. So uh, a couple different nominations on this, which is which is just great. And you know what they were able to do with the water is the really nice. Sloping, nuts. too, toward it with the trees planted on the side on the banks. That's a that's a good technique there. It looks yeah. like Knoxville. This sign says it oh, here. Okay. So so there you go. That's That answers the question. And back here, you've got... Kind of a combination of a bunch of different stuff here. Uh, Northern Lights is interesting, so some forced perspective, the guy looking out through the window. Uh, then here is like a mosaic uh, depicting a Lego minifig at the beach. That's pretty crazy. It's like a like a sandy beach mosaic there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely something you could put in your uh, in your Lego house, and always remembering to play well, as is uh, Lego's model. Yes, yeah. model. Yeah. Illinois license plate there. Yes. We've got a big, tall, wonderful-looking tower. Uh, here's is that a T-Rex eating a Tide Pod? <laughs> oh my! Yes. Keeping up with the memes here. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> a wonderful uh, highlight of the show, I think. So, great little detail there. Uh, we once again have, I think, the second or third time we've seen a flash build. He went up, up the side of the building and now he's running through here and he appears well, to have tripped. <laughs> yeah, well, see, the thing is we can't keep up with him because he's so fast. So he manages, he's always at these mocks That's before true. we even get to them. So it's really the same flash. We just see him multiple it times. It is, yeah. And uh, this time it looks like someone threw a banana uh, in front of him. Or maybe he, uh, one of the, the gorilla might have dropped a banana or something. But I'm sure he'll catch up with us oh, soon enough. Yes. Definitely. We'll run into him at some point oh, probably. Yeah. I like this arcade build with all the lights in it there, it's like ski ball and stuff, arcade machines, that's cool. And then another build in this section back here that I just absolutely love. Uh, so this Whoa. is, uh, I believe, the, the second temple in Jerusalem. Now, the builder that, uh, that set this up, he had it set up normally uh, very peacefully the first couple days of the but then since the, the theme is seasons, he decided you know switch it over to like a season of war here. And so you've got uh, the fort on the corner has been destroyed and the Romans are pouring in uh, and uh, the uh, Jews are kind of making a last ditch uh, defense here as the temple goes up in flames. And I don't think it's going to end well for them. So it's, it's really, I've seen it set up peacefully before. The first time I've seen it set up in like a state of war like this. So uh, both both ways, it's incredible to look at, and there's such such a massive uh, build here. Uh, there's so much to take in. I, I really like looking at this. So definitely uh, check out. We have we have a video from the past uh, that you can find on the channel of the the normal layout, but we'll do our best to get an updated uh, video as well uh, with the the war layout there. And so then we'll finish out this side of Rebel Lug and keep going around the show here. Yeah, so you got the uh, Genosis battle, Valley Battle, excuse me, uh, by Tyler here. Very awesome, impressive build with all sorts of details throughout. 
And then we have um, this section here by Peter, um, who is with Textlog and Rebelug. Um, and he spent, I, I remember, uh, he has put a lot of work into each of these builds here. Uh, actually stayed up all night last night completing this uh, Star Wars Battlefront II Assault on Theed. And he just poured his heart and soul into this build. There are just a lot of incredible details everywhere. So good job, Peter. Awesome work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, some of these builders have so much dedication, they just put so much time and effort into making sure this gets set up for the public and everything, that's so right. it's, yeah. that's incredible to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we come around here to the other side, uh, you've got, once again, we mentioned Crate earlier, uh, so this is nominated for Best Individual Layout, and the, the red and white contrast is super apparent here, and then you've got kind of the mountain on the left side. Uh, I think this is, this is really beautiful, and we'll definitely have more in-depth videos on these Star Wars layouts here because they're really cool looking. The structural integrity of the build, I just, you know, seeing the backside of it is really impressive and, and also the scale itself, so good job. Mm -hmm. Then the giant walker here, which I don't yeah. know the exact name of, um, but is beautiful. ATM-6. ATM-6, ATM there we go. See, when you have the builder around, they know what they're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> so yeah, this, this is uh, massive and looks very strong and intimidating. Yeah, Jay has done a really awesome job with this, creating um, all sorts of supports and uh, even incorporating some technique pieces for the suspension of it. So it looks like, a, looks like an awesome build indeed. This is another build that is just really cool to look at. There's so much here and uh, you might have seen some of our uh, kind of progress videos that we posted on the channel of this. This is uh, Finn's um, Stranger Things build with both, you know, the normal build on top and then the upside down underneath. And I love chatting with him about this and, and kind of getting the behind the scenes look at how it came together because it's so cool. I'm really curious. I'm going to have to ask him later today how he was able to accomplish the build being inverted like that. Um, I'm sure there's some really awesome, strong, secure connections in the, in the middle of the build. And it's definitely easy to see why it was nominated for Best Youth Creation. Good job, mm -hmm. Finn. Some other Star Wars vignettes and then a little Madison uh, skyline sort of build there yeah, as well yeah, in yeah. the midst of all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drew's done, Drew's done uh, a lot of awesome builds in the past. He always builds in these different diverse themes, Star Wars, uh, Agent P and Duff, Dr. Doofenshmirtz from, uh, what is it, Perry the Platypus? Or, uh, could, that seems super, right. Okay, super, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yes. And then... Nice little Alien Explorers build. I love the tiny house build there. Yeah. So it's kind of, you just pull it around <laughs> the little trailer house. That's Dan cool. Yeah, Daniel's another one of those builders that builds in all these different themes, not just Star Wars, but also medieval and just micro scale space, whatever he the wants. The Last of Us here. Right, yeah, yeah, including the modern house as well. And even his, his, some of his builds up top there and some of the other builders we mentioned have some great builds up top. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, you've got another build by Drew there, the, the uh, helmet by Spencer there, and uh, another outpost by Daniel, and then Anders' uh, Cliffside Guardians. Yeah. Yeah, that Cliffside Guardians in particular is just, uh, the mixing of like the green uh, with the gray rock work and everything is just, just really nice. I love looking at that. Here's a sad ship with no sails. That's unfortunate. I'm sure someone will find some sales for that ship soon. I, I hope Elijah does <laughs> soon, yeah. We'll have to help him with that. So I think that finishes out Rebel Lug, so we'll keep moving over here now. And I believe this section right here is the Virtual Lug collaboration. So Virtual Lug, if you've watched any of our Brick World coverage in the past, you're probably familiar with them because they always bring some really cool, impressive collaboration. And so this is Battlestar Galactica this year, and you can see a Colonial Viper there in front. Uh, you've got colonial movers uh, there in the back, uh, and then the, lar the larger ships uh, in, the, in the back there as well, kind of hanging uh, from the ceiling there. So uh, Cylon base ship and all sorts of cool stuff, and they've even built a mosaic for the, the kind of title card at the top, uh, and then built the, the whole box around it. So there's even some stuff as we keep going around here, some other bus. So Roy Cook built some great characters here. Uh, you've got Alex and Bart uh, built some other stuff. So all these other smaller scenes related uh, to Battlestar Galactica. And then this is the Battlestar Galactica hangar deck here. Uh, just about lost the cameraman, but we should be able to keep going. Uh, got all of the, the flying ships and everything inside the hangar deck. All the minifigs ready to, de to deploy. I like this. <clears throat> And then I think to finish out this collab is the Centurion and Six uh, kind of mosaic build here by uh, Lee and Danette Jones and Dave Ware. So they kind of all collaborated on this. So a whole bunch of different styles of building here for this for this collaboration. And this might be my uh, 
continual favorite during yeah. World of Lights when they yeah, shut yeah, the yeah. lights off, and this is uh, Reed Yeager's Hope Castle. Yeah, this mock is no stranger to the to the uh, any of the brick shows really, um, or Brick World, BrickCon events. Um, so it got some really awesome detailing here, and uh, this is yeah the Hope Castle, always an impressive thing to see. And it's always set up in a different way, you know, different wall design. The minifigs are all laid out differently. So Reed always puts a lot of time and effort into this, and it's it's great to see what he accomplishes every year. And then around here we've got some more ships, kind of mechs and bionicle builds. Uh, World War II battle getting in on the season's action. So you've even got you know different er, you know, winter, uh, spring, summer type of stuff. So nice little build there of the uh, Iwo Jima Memorial, mm -hmm. or actually the actual uh, uh, scene from which the photograph was taken. Yeah. yeah. I love that. The minifigs look very nice. You got an alien mothership, uh, kind of a castle, micro castle build here. Uh, some of these mechs type builds and everything, and then some some smaller buildings. I like the the creation of Adam build there. So kind of oh, going wow. for that Sistine Chapel effect. Yes, yeah, that's ingeniously done. Very nice work. And then around here. Uh, coming back this direction, we'll keep checking out some more of these uh, city layouts here. Uh, this one it catches my eye just for all the lights that are on right now, uh, which I think is pretty awesome. There's a Ghirardelli store. Yeah, yeah some very <laughs> recognizable names here. Yeah, lots of awesome details. I love the modular setups. They're always fun. Merry-go-round, a Ferris wheel, roller coaster. Lots of, lots of great stuff there. And... And we'll, we'll keep going down here for the the game. So this looks like it might be. This is a modular dungeon. So maybe like a D and D type setup. Maybe. Yeah. I'm 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 unfamiliar with how the game works. Um, but I'm guessing that's what this is. It looks like it does definitely looks like a playable module. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think similar. We saw one towards the very beginning of the tour as well. So yeah. similar to that. And then over here we've got a builder with like a like a ball machine there, and he's sort of demonstrating basically sort of like a, what you see with a great ball contraption, but. Uh, a little bit different there, so you get some some awesome movement. It takes a minute to find where where the ball is because there's so many, actually there are multiple because there are so many different moving uh, components in this contraption. So it's just very awesome to see engineering marvel. <laughs> That's a lot of fun to watch. Oh, yeah. uh, then we'll just flip on over here and check out uh, this side of the display. So if we start right here uh, with some of these old like Blacktron and some of the older you know space colors and everything moon base modules some sp nice spaceships uh, then you get nice kind of sand scene there as well with some some of the battling it out large brick world badge uh, so the brick world it's kind of the iconic badge that they've had at the show for a lot of years uh, big French uh, like cathedral church building there uh, with some American tanks. That's pretty cool. I even like how they kind of expose the ceiling there uh, with the show the wood. That's a oh, cool, yeah, cool yeah, technique. You can see the rafters. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it uh, looks like maybe some custom printing on some of this, uh, the spaceship right here to give that kind of weathered look. Yeah, some rust and uh, maybe even some. Uh, oh, it looks like it's a radioactive uh, ship or something <laughs> of that sort. So yeah. I'd stay away from it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and. Then around here, a uh, bunch of food. So it looks like we got some like sushi, uh, some chocolate bars and things. Build out a Lego. Yeah, micro Mordor or think. Weather top, Hobbiton, yeah. Uh, the Falconhurst Treehouse, yeah, some yeah, that's very neat stuff. Awesome treehouse there, and I believe this is actually another project on Lego Ideas. So if you like what you see here, it's very cool. This is the Swiss Family Robinson uh, Treehouse. So that's that's really neat. And then I think the same builder who did that, uh, Tim Stone, uh, and then Aiden and Graham, I think his, his kids, uh, did both of these other big projects here. Uh, so this is the island of Burke. Uh, all sorts of cool action going on here. So ton, tons to take in. And then next to that, nominated for best group layout is the Crystal Space Station. Uh, lots of cool lighting on kind of the core space station there. And then fun themed fighters around. There's almost, uh, this reminds me like, there's like a Buzz Lightyear themed one there. I think that's pretty <laughs> neat. <laughs> yeah, I bet there are a lot of other different themes. If we look closely enough, I'm sure you can see some more Easter eggs that the builder mm -hmm. has hidden throughout this mock. 
And then coming around here is a, a roller coaster build you might uh, be familiar with if you've seen any of our past videos of this. So the builder's still hard at work here uh, on, the, on the build. <laughs> total rebuild. Last year's hit the floor. Okay, oh. so total rebuild. That's <laughs> Last year it was six feet, now it's 18. Well, I guess go. the rebuild made it like three times as long, so that's a plus. You know, as, uh, who is it? Uh, Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park said, life finds a way. So they found a way to, to put it back together. Looks that's amazing. That's right. And it's j even cooler than before. So lots to take in there. All sorts of minifig action and stuff going on. Then you've got Firehouse back here. And here, like a Vietnam Air War layout, welcome to the jungle. Looks like you've got some soldiers coming out of the helicopter. Yeah, I got some Hueys the there. Uh, looks like maybe some uh, some German uh, uh, transport trucks there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the back. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good stuff. Big Star Wars layout once again here. So, uh, I like lots of trans clear. They use like the slopes there to keep the ships up, which is interesting technique. And then, of course, you've got, I believe, Superman coming in. I'm sure he'll be able to defeat all of them easily. I think so, yeah. I think he'll be able to help out in some way, <laughs> shape, or form. Here's some custom big figs. Uh, so these are, you know, the bigger Lego figs, but highly customized here to make some really cool different figures. A lot of, like, DC-type uh, figures here. So you see a lot of the villains and stuff and Marvel. I like that. And then Frankenstein's castle uh, with all the different... You get the... Scooby-Doo uh, minifigs yeah. in here. Uh, you've got like the headless horsemen and stuff and all the different monsters inside the castle. And we'll keep coming this direction. I think we're just a couple layouts left here. Uh, very close to being finished. There's a large group of people here, so we'll show the Cincy Lug layout from this side uh, as they enjoy their game there. So it looks like you've got basically a giant train layout here, essentially, uh, for Cincy Lug. Uh, with some nice buildings, uh, very nice kind of architecture and brickwork on this side. I always enjoy way. seeing a lot of uh, different train layouts throughout, uh, you know, brick world, any brick convention, especially when it's augmented with modulars like this. There's just a lot of awesome details, especially on the trucks of the cars, facades of the buildings. It's really nicely laid out. Good mm -hmm. job. And we'll just move back around this way then, and easier to get to the other layout, so we'll come back this way. You can show up above the buildings there, John, uh, all of the uh, the trains yeah. that are on the other side because massive, there's lots to see. Massive train yard with a lot of awesome cars, custom decals on them, ingenious part usages for the, for the ruffled metal there. Mm -hmm. Looks awesome. Very nice display. And then I think this might be the final uh, kind of layout here uh, for us at the show. So a couple of things we want to point out is that you can go down there and show those couple of spaceships there. Uh, next to these great uh, kind of mech character stuff. So this is all really neat. And then uh, nominated for best spacecraft. This is Matt Roundtree's build, which is just awesome. I was talking to him about this earlier. And you see the, uh, the base he built is like just as good, if not better, than the ship itself, which is just crazy. I love that. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot of Matt's work in the past, and this is this is certainly just an impressive build, especially with the the end fuselage there, the wings themselves, the front cockpit. There's a lot of neat angling tricks that have been accomplished in this build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then also the FT racer next to it there by Heath Floor is is excellent as well. So we'll come around here and show that. Have a. Uh, it looks like they may be. Uh, doing some sort of train event over here, something like that. I don't know, uh, they wanted us to film this, so okay. let's see what let's see what's going on here. <laughs> so what exactly is happening here? Uh, demolition Derby. Oh. <laughs> train Demolition Derby. <laughs> this is a good way to end the, the tour video here. <laughs> Waiting for all the action to happen. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen here, John? Uh, I think there are going to be some pieces flying everywhere, and I'm, I'm going to try to stay outside the blast radius because it looks like they're incorporating a lot of power here. Either way, I'm sure it'll be fun to watch. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And we have one car engaged currently, ladies and gentlemen, going back on the track. Some coins have spilled. The intensity is getting higher and higher. John is going to move his camera back on there. They're quickly gathering it up so as to make the most out of this. And I, what do you think is going to happen to that car in the middle, Joshua? I have a feeling it's not going to end very well for that car in the think, middle. Do you think the clutch power, though, is enough to stop it from the inevitable velocity that will be hitting it at a terminal point during which all the bricks will be separated out into an inevitably large amount of space? 
<laughs> Let's see what happens. That's only on improv, folks. Whoa! Oh, okay. <laughs> Qu quite the scene of <laughs> slaughter there. <laughs> Ooh, got him. All right. I think John was able to capture that on camera, so good, good stuff. <laughs> I'm glad we took a little pit stop. That's a good way to, to end the tour. There was about a half dozen. I mean, stuff was going 10 feet in the air. It was, okay. it was good times. It's a part of the train Olympics. It's the last thing we do. So there'll be a, a, a power lift and then a tug of war. And then the last thing, it's just, it's just wreck stuff. <laughs> the best part for last. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you notice it's like every time, oh, big, you know, like 10 more people line up around the table. So. Exactly. Well, thank you. We'll make sure to keep that in mind for the future. <laughs> Then here, I think we end with this, uh, I believe a game is taking place here, so can you give a quick introduction to what we're looking at here? Okay, we're looking at Battletech, played with Lego. So, Battletech is turn-based, it's military tactics, normally played with metal miniatures on hex maps that are, you know, about two inches tall, and we just scaled it up, so, it, it, and when we get enough damage on some of the units, we're going to start ripping pieces off, and that's how we leave the layout for the public display time tomorrow morning. This is the way to play with LEGO right here, people. This is, this is it. Agree. It, do it doesn't destroy the bricks either, like Battleship or crashing trains together. So, There you go. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, great layout here. So it's always fun to see all the uh, builders competing around here and trying to destroy all the different mechs and everything on the layout. And then there is one last build next to this. This is a build we've shown a couple times before in some tours. This is the Vietnam uh, Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. Uh, and I always love how they get the sloping effect down there uh, for, for this memorial. So uh, excellent, excellent work here for this builder. And it's, it's just, you know, really nice just kind of on its own set of tables here to take this all in and uh, catch all the, the little details and stuff and the minifigs that are on this display. So, yeah, very, very excellent build. Okay. We also have um, possibly, if we could swing down here, there might be an animated build uh, that we had previously covered, okay. one of Ted's uh, uh, spaceships racing. So we might go and check that out. Sure, he just yeah. asked me if he wanted to see that. Why, why not? Yeah, yeah. Def definitely. So yeah. I think that, that what we just talked about was kind of the end of everything we'd covered. So we'll end then, then with this uh, cool animation here. And I think that will have been all the builds that I'm aware of on display here at the show. Uh, there might be some more added uh, before tomorrow, but I, I think that's pretty much everything. Be, uh, some uh, some uh, Bricklink stuff over here, uh, like a tribute to, to Dan Jessic or something that, so we could check that out too if you True. want. True. Yeah. yeah, we can we'll check that out uh, after after Ted shows us uh, his his ship here. So we'll see what see what's going on over here, and. Maybe catch a little movement, yeah. So uh, if you remember earlier in the video, we talked a little bit about this layout, but it looks like there's actually tons of fun movement here. So if you want to explain kind of what's going on here. Sure, the inspiration was that uh, two brick worlds ago, I did a speeder bike rally race, but they're all placed on the table. So idea is, oh, you're kind of hard to see a race going on. So I had this passion to kind of get this race moving. So the CDX coaster system, um, I got my ideas flowing as far as, hey, that might simulate a flight. So that was kind of the idea and kind of getting a black landscape to make it look like it was flying and then it kind of added into a collaboration from there like what's the reason for it to be a black surface and so it's a race that goes to an alien planet and that's kind of how it's all came together mm -hmm. yeah and it's just tons of action here and so much catches your eye definitely yeah and, and ted i was telling them last night you know the man the way you managed to incorporate all the bionicle with regular lego system brick and, and now the track too it's just always neat to see how all of this comes to fruition in your mocks so Thanks a bunch. Yeah, thank you for showing that to us. Appreciate yeah, I'm it. Glad you could see it in action. Yeah. So it's always great to see these these uh, builds with movement when they're actually kind of fully running yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So yeah, and you mentioned Bricklink, so we will end there actually because yeah, yeah. we we don't want to skip this here. There's some yeah. some cool stuff that they have in their kind of layout uh, over here. And one th one thing I'll mention as we walk up here, it's not on right now, but they have this cool virtual reality thing they're doing where you they set up the Simpsons house, uh, build the set, and you can actually put on virtual reality headset, and then it's like you're a minifig walking around the Simpsons house. So I, I know you you mentioned enjoy. a couple times how you wish you were a minifig. This would give you the chance you to try this out, and you can uh, there's a little clicker that kind of moves you from room to room, and it, okay. it you can look at everything, and the chairs look massive because you're the size of a minifig and everything. So it's a really fun experience. That's yeah. Awesome. Lego VR. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great.
And then here is a couple of dedications to Daniel Jezik, who's the founder of BrickLink and uh, you know BrickWorld over the years has done a lot with the charity auction and everything, uh, and and supporting uh, Dan Jezik and uh, a lot of money donated over the years through that. So uh, it's always cool to see these uh, different memorials uh, that are placed here at the show. So. I think that's a great way to uh, end end the tour here. I think we showed uh, I think pretty much everything that I'm aware of at the show. So I think hopefully everyone watching enjoyed the the commentary and enjoyed seeing. If they didn't enjoy the commentary, at least hopefully you enjoyed seeing the builds. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it may have been a little pun filled at times, but we had fun. So, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me, John. Uh, thanks to Matt for joining us the first half as well. Uh, that was a lot of fun to have him along with us too. So. Uh, this has been great kind of getting a chance to go through and check out all the different builds here. And as I mentioned throughout the tour, we'll have many more in-depth videos on individual layouts and things from the show here. So definitely make sure to, to look on the channel for that as well and see all these more in-depth videos. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you soon. Okay, see, now it's set up with the, the signs and everything, I think. Yes, and so we'll see. Button light fused detonate. Oh. going in. Oh wow. Okay. Very cool. Got button flash laser swords. Oh okay. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Midday to me. Ah. Same I still like it. Interesting the uh, the shadow how to use the position. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Awesome. Try that. So this is the crystal stasis. <laughs> you can slow it down and speed it up. The touch screen here. Ooh, try the purple. Messing with all the lights. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the awesome. Turn it down. Let's see if the fifth is saving it. Ooh. He doesn't have it set. Let's turn it down. There you go. That's awesome. There we go. That's more of a build up. <laughs> <laughs>